Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm late. I apologize. We had technical difficulties. I forgot that this camera was used at conference uh, last week, and so it shows all the settings and all the numbers, and it looked really bad, so I had to fix it. I apologize. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. It's going to be great. We're talking about Copilot, uh, Copilot CRM. I'm going to be doing a live Q&A, uh, answering any and all questions you might have. Oh, man, things are breaking. Okay. Um, we're going to jump right in. There's already 40 people on here, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I will answer a couple questions in the Q&A um, or the, the chat here, but I would like to get some callers on if possible. So let me go ahead and pop this call in our phone number here. Um, let's see here. Where's my phone number? My phone number is in here. Ah, oh, call-in show. There it is. All right. This is the number, 361, right here, 361-733-3332. If you're in the queue, I will give you priority on the phones because we're already getting a bunch of comments coming in. All right. Today, the objective is to answer any and all questions about Copilot CRM, the good, the bad, the ugly, and any question you might have about features. I'll tell you exactly where we're at. I will not try to sell you on anything because... uh. I just want to be open and honest about what we can and cannot do from day one and what, where we're going in terms of the future of the software. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, copilotcrm.com is launching next month. We're going to roll it out in phases uh, over the course of three weeks or so. So that way we don't overburden the servers because we have an overwhelming amount of people wanting to join, which is great. I'm thrilled, but I just don't want to have any problems. I don't think we should have any problems with that many people joining, even if we did it in one day. <clears throat> but... Um, we want to make sure it's all very, very smooth. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we already got two people in the call queue. So I am going to prioritize people in the call queue. Then if there is no callers, I will work through your Q&A on the chat. I will stick around for a very long time today if needs be. I'm just going to answer as many questions as I possibly can. Um, so let's go through the call queues first. Um, I apologize. I'm somewhat disheveled because I was messing up all sorts of things on my, my tech side this morning. But we should be ready to go. All right. Without any further delay. First caller is coming from, I think it's Massachusetts, 978. Brandon, you are on the show. Welcome. Thanks for calling in. Hey, Mike. We're currently using Lawn Pro as our current software, and I have two questions about it. Go First it. off, um, is it going to be easier to switch to uh, Copilot since we're coming from Lawn Pro, and I know it's the same C um, CTO? Um, not necessarily easier. Um, I think you'll find, especially at the beginning, a lot of uh, the tech side is similar, uh, but it'll it's forking. Mm -hmm. like we're already making a bunch of changes in terms of cockpit, the AI side of things. And so I think the familiarity might be a little bit higher at the very beginning, but it's not necessarily going to be easier. Down the road, our plan is to take the probably about five other competing softwares that we know are the most common and then download their CS CSV files when you're trying to export data and then make a very specific onboarding process for those specific CRMs um, because every single CRM exports data slightly differently. We then can change our inputting, mm -hmm. how we take that data and make the most use of it. So um, I would say by summer or fall, let's just go with fall um, 2023, we will have one at least for service autopilot. And then the next would probably be Jobber and Yardbook. We'll go after those three, hopefully in 2023, and then probably do a couple more as we head into 2024. Um, and those would be very specific onboarding for a specific CRM, just so it's very smooth. Awesome. And then my second question has to do with the wave implementation. So we put our thing in the first day, but I know you said you could, it's going to be released in wave. So if we're not in that first wave, how long do you think the waves are going to be? Is it going to be like every two weeks, every month, just because obviously we don't want to switch in the middle of the spring rush. Yep, no, totally. I'll make sure that everyone that is on the current list, so if you go to copilotcrm.com, get yourself on the list, everyone on that list will be in before the end of February. Um, ideally, we literally can roll it out over the course of like five, six days. But I'm going to be tracking just making sure speed is exactly where I want it. Because um, if we have 500 people join in two days and then everyone's importing data, it could potentially, I don't actually think it would. I really don't. And we talked to our CTO, uh, Patrick, and him and I talked and everything. I don't think it would, but we're just going to play it careful because the last thing I want you to do is start importing your data and then it's slow. It's a little bit lethargic and that's you know, what I do not want. So I would guarantee you though, though, if you're on that list by the end of February, you'd have full access and be able to import all your stuff. Cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. You got it. Take care. All right. Next caller is coming from Alan 909. Um, real quick though, I might drop you guys after you ask your question. Don't be offended. It's just, we're going to have to go through questions today. A lot of them. So, um, let's go ahead and jump into the next question though. 909 area code from Alan, I believe. 
Go for it. Hey, good morning. How are you? I guess good afternoon. How you doing? Hey, good. How are you? Good, yeah. Hey, my question is, okay, your co-pilot compared to Jobber in today's system, uh, how would you compare it and contrast with co-pilot? And then is it one of those, do you recommend to wait until all the systems are in place with co-pilot before swapping out a Jobber? Or are you comparable presently in their current state? I would say if you're doing um, under half a million in revenue, that uh, I would probably, if your objective is to switch over to Copilot, I would probably do it right from the get-go. If you're doing over a million plus in um, another software, you might want to wait a little bit just because there's probably going to be features that we don't have at the beginning that you are leaning on. So here's the big three that we do not have currently. Number one, job costing. Number two, price matrix. And number three, here's the third one I was blanking on now. Uh, job costing, price matrix, and there's a third one. I'm forgetting it. But um, those things will be resolved within the next six to eight months. And um, so you might want to wait until the end of 2023 and then evaluate then. Um, but I think for for 95% of users that do not use very, very, very uh, specific integrations with automations, Infusionsoft, and the likes of price matrixes and job costing, 95% of people are going to be just fine from day one going forward. And so if you're in Jobber, I'd say that the, the, the downside of going to Copilot right from day one is we aren't going to have as many integrations uh, because they have some really cool um, ones with like company cam, et cetera. Um, I would then say that we do integrate with jo uh, with Zapier, uh, Zapier so that you can, you, a lot of those integrations we will be from day one, be able to go with the, the, the downside is going to be the lack of integrations from day one. We will beat, jobber on automations from day one we have about 30 pre-built automations using tagging systems uh using we can do sms and uh, emails to employees we have a lot of automation that are pre-built for you so if you've used a software before like automations are kind of freaky and you feel like you got to hire someone else to just set them up for you we will dominate on automations from day one um when it comes to pre-built what we don't have that's the third thing is fully customizable automations where everything is customizable, like every single last thing. We have 30 pre-built that I would go to bat and say that you can, it'd be hard to, to go and find a use case outside of these 30, um, honestly. But if you're using them to a very, very minute level inside of Service Autopilot specifically or Infusionsoft, you're probably not going to want to join from day one. Because we're going to have to build the the same customizability throughout 2023. It's a big lift. It's a big financial development side of things. Um, but yeah, job costing, price matrix, and fully customized automations are the three that if you're using those to a high extent and you're doing a million plus inside of another software, I'd probably just wait. Um, you'll get the free version of Copilot. Check it out. Keep you know, Stay inside the group and things like that. And then um, just wait until you know, everything you need is on there. All right, next caller is from 573 Columbia. What's up? Hi, Mike. Uh, so I had a bit of a loaded question. Cool. Uh, I know in previous videos and stuff, you've kind of always talked about how the franchisees will always have a majority of your attention just because a lot of these people have spent their last dollar and in really investing in the Augusta Lawn Care franchise. So I guess, I guess my main concern is um, uh, just with you coming out. I feel like you came out with quite a few new things here, here in the, in the, uh, recent times with i guess the, the c-suite podcast uh you have the courses you're doing the uh, the event again this year and now you're coming out with the crm which which i am super excited for i guess i'm just concerned uh because companies like jobber and yardbook all they do is just 100 percent. they just run their crm uh i guess i'm kind of just worried about if you know something can maybe get flipped upside down within the augusta franchise uh, will this have an impact on the users of the CRM or is there maybe like a, just a dedicated team that's only going to be working on the CRM? Yep. So it'll be completely separate teams. If that makes sense. Yeah, totally. So it'll be completely separate teams um, in terms of who's working Augusta versus the co-pilot team. Um, in terms of like all the things that I have going on, um, this comes down to, in my opinion, finding really awesome people. So you mentioned several. Let me just men talk about the ones you mentioned. So you mentioned like C-suite and filter. I spend 30 minutes a week doing that, recording it with Lee. He does all the recording. It's his his podcast, et cetera. Um, everything else that I'm doing, it's the same way. For example, home service CPA, I have a meeting with them once a week, um, maybe every two weeks with Lisa, Brad, and the team that works on taxes and bookkeeping, all the rest of it. 
our goal with Augusta, and I've been pretty clear about this, is we're trying to vertically integrate every single aspect of the home service industry, right? And so whether that be the CRM, down the road, I want to do a bank. I want to be able to control every single process from start to finish and have that as a service for our franchisees, but then also be able to rent that out to you. For example, Amazon competes directly with Walmart. However, Walmart uses Amazon to sell their products. And so um, even though they are quote unquote competitors, Walmart still sees the benefit of being on their platform. Even though they are quote unquote com competitors, it's still better for them because of the amount of uh, uh, logistics that are solved, the pricing power, et cetera. So uh, how I see it is someone can join Augusta, get all access to the full integration. They're going to get the cutting edge of everything, or you can, you know, if you want your own brand, et cetera, totally fine, totally awesome. You can rent out e elements of these different so uh, systems that I offer. In my opinion, they work the best when they're all fully integrated. And that's why we have Augusta Lawn Care. Um, but if someone does not want that, that's fine. I, my goal and the go goal of Augusta is to change the level of professionalism in the landscaping industry, period, full stop. Therefore, having a better CRM for us at Augusta is important, but having one that all of us in the industry can benefit from also very important because that is the entire goal of why we exist. So um, in terms of my attention and you know Augusta affecting it, like you said there at the very end about what happens if something happens with Augusta, how does it affect Copilot? We are, we are cash flow positive at Augusta. We are profitable now. I don't ever foresee that changing. Um, in 2023, I made sure that every one of my businesses were profitable, had hard conversations about um, with the managers at the very beginning of 2023, or 2022, and said, um, you know, we must become profitable. We must cut. We must do really hard stuff. Whatever it is, we must be profitable. I foresaw the recession and we really took that seriously. So I don't think that there'll be a problem in terms of, uh, you know, negatively impacting from Augusta to, uh, to Copilot. I would say that every great founder led a CRM in this industry has come from someone that is in the weeds of the industry, not people that are good at software. And so whether you look at Jonathan Potoshnik, who started Service Autopilot, no longer involved, um, other CRMs have been built by these founders and have been sold off. Um, yes, City Turf, for example, in Texas, they compete with a lot of people, but there's a lot of people in their competition that uses Service Autopilot in that area. Um, so I, I would not look at this as comp competition. If someone's really concerned, like, oh man, me supporting Copilot is going to be somehow supporting Augusta. And that, that sort of mindset, um, like, okay, fine you're probably going to fall behind over the next five years as we develop this. And um, I would just say that a rising tide floats all boats. People inside of Augusta have to embrace this because uh, they realize that the reason that we are also, we're not able to develop the software in-house and only use it inside Augusta because we do not have the capital to develop and put into R&D that we see fit to be able to compete and then dominate this industry in the CRM world. You need a lot of money. It's extremely expensive. Um, for what I'm trying to do with AI and the team that we have in place now, uh, emerge my team with that of what used to be Lawn Pro. Lawn Pro has continued to do its own thing, different developers. We're doing our thing. They're servicing that you know niche, smaller audience in just lawn care. We are going after an enterprise level software user, uh, really looking into AI in the future is going to be the focus of this software. We are not going to be the best at certain things because I don't think it moves the needle. I personally do not think that having a thousand automations that are so detailed and customized and like so in depth that you need consultants to help you. I don't think that's going to help your business. I think the 30 or 40 that we've pre-built and the ones that we're going to continue to, you know, we will add customizability this year. That will, that will be sufficient. Um, I think what's going to be actually differentiating you from the competition right now is uh, decision-making frameworks and AI that allows you like, I could literally, maybe in a little bit, I'll, I'll read a couple of the ones I've been working on like last night. I am literally creating hundreds of decision-making frameworks for your business based upon the math and no one will be able to compete with that. They'll rip me off in a year by like even what I posted yesterday seeing the dashboard. I already know in the past two to three months as I've made this announcement that some of these CRMs have developed are putting more money into R&D. I have someone inside an organization uh, that literally told me as soon as that announcement came out, they immediately started investing more into R&D. So I'm fantastically happy about that because it's going to help other users. It's going to help this industry. And that's all I care about. So I'm not concerned about, you know, other, other CRMs picking up. They will absolutely, especially some of these things we're doing this year, they're going to pick up on. Um, but it'll be evident in a year or two, just how far ahead we are. All right. Next caller is from 630. Hey, my quick question. I'll keep it nice and short. Um, how is Copilot going to handle crew implementation? Because uh, right now with Jabber, there's 
pretty much only individual uh, team members. And something that I hate doing is, you know, if you got four guys on a job, you got to individually add each one. Is there any sort of crew implementation you're going to do uh, with Copilot? So there's teams. What we have called, we have teams. You could pre-built those, and that's going to basically group together individuals. So you can assign a team to a project. Um, that is possible, like a crew. Um, I, in my opinion, based on what we have seen, though, the use of that is tough because if one person out of let's say call it four people calls out or is sick, they're already going to be doing individuals anyways. So we still see to this day 90, 95 percent of people scheduling using individuals, even though they might have crews, because if you have four people, there's like literally a 40, 50 percent chance that any given day, one of them's calling out, one of them is sick, one is on vacation. And so you end up having to move things around anyways. Sure. So it's not something we are putting a whole bunch of time into, but it's already um, as, as what we call teams. Cool. All right. Thanks so much. You got it. All right. Next caller is coming from 270. Again, if you guys have questions, the uh, number at the bottom of the screen is priority. Go ahead. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, this is Brian Bellamy. Am I online? You're live. What's up, brother? Okay, what's up? Man, my question is, I just, uh, the, the video's off a little bit. I just started, this will be my first year in uh, lawn care, and mm -hmm. I'm building off a pressure washing, soft washing mm -hmm. uh, business. And my question is, we have 80 clients lined up for this year, and I'm currently using like QuickBooks and stuff, and I was going to get into Long Care Pro, like you mentioned in most of your videos. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing if this would be a good fit for me to start into. And I'm also trying to keep all my soft washing clients and my lawn care accounts separate. And if you could do that in that same program, or if I should be using two different softwares. I don't think you need two different softwares. The delineation is going to come down to making sure you have different services inside of your CRM. If you don't have a CRM right now and you're just using QuickBooks, uh -huh. Getting a CRM is, is a brilliant idea. It's probably the biggest change you'll make um, outside of marketing for this year. Um, now, in terms of which one you use, I would personally not use Copilot if you're planning to do less than $200,000 in annual revenue. Um, if you're planning to do above that, then okay. I would use Copilot. If you're planning to do under that, I would probably go with the cheaper option of using Lawn Pro um, because even though it's called Lawn okay. Pro, there are enough features for you to still operate inside of. Um, most people don't know that it's, it's still good. It's good for the small operator, drag and drop calendars. It's awesome. Um, if you're, if your intention down okay. the road is to get five, 600,000, a million dollar business, probably a good idea, even if it's somewhat premature to, to start with copilot. So that way you don't have to do, make the switch, right? So my, my personal belief is if yeah. you don't have plans in the next three years to do 200,000 or more in annual revenue, I probably would not join copilot. Yeah, that's our goal. I'm wanting to get 500,000, uh, half a million by 2024 is the goal. And uh, we're doing really well every year. But like I said, I'm working off of fresh washing, soft washing for the last three years. And we're introducing landscape and lawn care and to really get our gross revenue up and stuff like that. And I was, and I kind of want to keep everything separate, you know, clients separate, you know, because when we send out emails to like reoccurring clients versus soft washing, it's just not the same type of business. I was just, you know, I didn't know if we could do that all through one program. So, but yeah, that's definitely our goal is to uh, get to seven figures for sure. Yeah, like I think it's probably more of a branding thing and how you, you present your brand and whether or not you need to split them up. Um, like in terms of the name of the company, how you frame it in terms of on your website with, you know, keep, keeping the departments of say lawn care and soft washing. You could definitely do it inside one business, allowing you to have operational efficiency inside one CRM, one payroll account, one entity. Um Especially at your size, I'd try to keep it together. You're going to have a lot of inefficiencies by trying to have like two QuickBooks accounts. And when you start getting two payrolls and you have two different CRMs, two different, like it just gets very expensive, especially at your size. If, right. you're, if you're doing 2 million in revenue and 1 million of that is lawn care, 1 million of that soft wash, it starts to make sense to divide things up. But at your size, I'd highly recommend trying to keep your branding where you could do the both together. Um, and then maybe down the road, if, you're, if okay. your plan is to grow and scale, then you could split them out. But at your size, um, you literally, you're going to start eating two, 3% of your top line revenue just in the fact that you have split the two and there's extra cost for all the different entity structures, software packages, payroll running, being twice, all that good stuff. Okay. So keep everything, keep everything under one like umbrella. As long much. as your brand can handle it. As long as your branding is done correctly and yeah. it's very clear, like on your website, and even the name of the business. Like if you're going to call it something lawn care, it's going to be hard to have a soft wash. But if you do call it something like, you know, Bob's right. soft wash and lawn care, okay, now we can, we can literally just roll with that. 
Yeah, it's an extra trench. The, the, the name is Bellamy Exterior Experts, and I did a wide name because we want to be in all home services. It's Got it. a, like ultimate go. Yep. The one-stop shop. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, man. Well, I appreciate it. All right, brother. Take care. All right, let's go ahead and answer a couple questions that came in on the chat. Um, while that's happening, again, if you want to uh, call in, feel free. Will there be a way to input your current info for KPI, such as current close ratio and such, or have to start? You really have to gonna have to start from scratch. Um, none of these other data uh, or none of these other softwares are going to input a lot of this data that we could actually track and use as triggers. So it's going to be really from the time that you you join copilot these kpis will kick in um it stinks but the amount of processing power is is exorbitant if we go back in time and start pulling like clock in clock outs for every single job as well as more importantly they won't export this data the vast majority of them won't again as we go into each software system um, and we use other crms and we have an onboarding process for each of them uh, we'll be able to take whatever they do give us and specialize that and some of them we will be able to go back in time a little bit and get job history things like that others don't so we'll just have to make a specialized kind of uh, track of, of of onboarding for each of those um in terms of what was the other question here uh oh what i was gonna say is even uh, last night i was working on the 3d notifications data-driven decisions the ai part of it even though I was working on that, the power of the AI will become like almost exponentially better after one year. Because after one year, now you got, start to get trends. You're able to look at trends from year over year data. It's extremely powerful. And so last night, as I was running, you know, some people, are, one day I'll show how I, how I did this. Um, but it's extremely difficult to look at all businesses and be able to literally tell you what to do based on certain data when everyone is different, right? And so... One of the things that's really easy, though, is once you have a year over year data, I can compare to last year. I can say, okay, last year, you were 20, 30% less revenue this month. Here's what you should do this year in order to change that because we can now take, for example, the customers that you serviced a year ago in a a six-week frame and say, hey, these are the customers that last year accepted a job during this time. Where you're slow right now, here's the customers you contact and here's the quotes they accepted last year. Try to resell them on these same things. So, for example, during the winter, property cleanups. Hey, let's go back in time pull this customer list for you, give it to you and say, hey, these are the customers that accepted last year during this time. You're slow based upon your revenue uh, trajectory. Go ahead and sell it to these people. So um, that's just one example of hundreds of data points that I'm pulling. Um, I think it's going to be great. wonder if auto charge for an ACH will be available. Yes. So we will do auto charge for credit cards and ACH right away. We do not tack on extra fees to these. And ACH is capped at five bucks. So if you are doing... $10,000 $10,000 projects, you're going to pay $5 for an ACH charge. Fantastic. Um, we don't tack anything on extra after that. I like to think it would be Tony. Yes, it is. Aaron, the enterprise package says employees see what they earn in real time and get paid daily. Will this have its own payroll service linked to third parties or is a, is P4P a payroll service already? P4P is not a payroll service. Um, it is, you will still need a payroll integration or a um, payment processor like QuickBooks, Gusto, et cetera. Um, in terms of employees seeing what they earn in real time, that will be inside of the P4P app and then getting paid daily. That will be through um, an integration with probably MasterCard. We're still working on this. This will not be av- available immediately. So probably be available hopefully fall of 2023 where they would be able to get a percentage of the money that they make on a daily basis. They'd be able to get their the base pay, they get a percentage of that. Probably 60, 70%, you'd be able to dictate that. So that way, at the end of the pay period, there's still money there for taxes and deductions and payroll, things like that. So definitely something that um, I'm really looking forward to. It's going to reduce the amount of people that are asking for pay, pay, uh, what's it called, pay advances. It's also going to allow still for P4P to operate because the performance dollars are still accruing. They Those would still be at the end of the pay period. You'd still be able to tap into those for yellow slips. Um but this is not going to be something from day one, all right? This will be available by fall 2023. We're working on the integration and the security side of it. It's pretty intense because of the amount of transactions that are being done and the calculations between softwares. Angelica, will it be easy to transfer all my information from Service Autopilot? We're going to make it as easy as we possibly can. Um, I want to say summer, we should have the integration, or sorry, the track for inputting data specifically just for Service Autopilot. That being said, um, we can only take so much of what they give us and be able to use that for um, you know inputting data. So keep that in mind. 
we're kind of limited to whatever the software, whatever your software is, we're limited to what we can actually uh, pull in. Currently writing an employee handbook for our 700 to a million dollar revenue landscaping business. Anyone have suggestions for video sites with good references? Want it to be a couple pages long. Um, the one on landscapebusinesscourse.com is very long. You could take that one to summarize it down. I think it's 30 pages. You could just take the parts that you want out uh, or, or vice versa. In present day, is it this better or equal to Jobber? I'm asking as I want to see if it makes sense to change now before rush and wait till, until winter. Um, if you like Jobber and it, it, the, you don't feel like you're outgrowing it, I'd stick with Jobber for now. If you feel like, man, like there's more, I need better automations, I would like to have better data, uh, it doesn't track my attrition, it doesn't track my time to close, it doesn't track a lot of like the data side, and that's something that you need, you should switch to Copilot um, from day one. But if you like, if you like, man, I like Jobber, it's great, it's serving me well, I'd stick with that. Um, there will come a day when you, you start growing to the point, like, okay, I need something more, there's more to be had. And honestly, when it comes to cost of a CRM, the cost that you spend per month is so inconsequential to what a better software will, will do for you. That's why people will, will uh, use companies like Aspire that you're paying a percentage of revenue um, and you pay thousands of dollars a month for subscriptions to do. Because what those companies realize is if they can just save a couple percent, like five, six percent by having a better software, it saves them 10x what they're spending on subscription. So like for, for me personally, I would easily pay three to four times what I'm paying currently on Service Autopilot if it was doing certain things that I know would bring massive benefit and efficiencies to my business, but they're not there. I don't have any control over it. And it's ultimately why I had to get Copilot is I need control of something um, to be able to see what I want to see inside of a CRM. It's not showing on on YouTube. What? That's not good. I can't check that live. Sorry. I'll be switching over from Jobber in February. It's, it's an extra $100 a month, but I'm sure it'll be worth it. Yeah, like $100, $200. I'm telling you, I know it sounds bad because now I have a software, but I would have told you this a year or two years ago. The amount you spend on software does not matter. It absolutely does not, especially if you're doing over two, three, four hundred thousand 400,000 revenue. Like if you're doing 50,000 revenue, don't but get copilot. If that's like all you're ever going to do, you don't need it. You get yard book. It'll serve you just fine. But as you've been to scale the business, the cost of software is inconsequential to the amount that you will save. If the software is built correctly and it will save you so much money, time, energy, and it will facilitate growth and give you the data points that you need to grow the business. Um, like it's literally like if you don't have some of this data, let me show you guys this. I, I put this up on, on, uh, on social media yesterday. Okay. If you do not have this information, it's literally like driving a car without a speedometer and without a gas gauge. Okay. If you don't know how long it's taking you to on average close close um your 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 estimates, like it's a big problem. This is time to close. This is how long does it take before people on average respond to your quotes, either won or lost. Close ratio. This number <coughs> is the only thing that people need to know for most small business owners. It dictates so much. I talked about it at conference for an entire hour and showed like 10 different things that it affects inside your company. It's the only thing that matters. Let me make this a little bigger. There we go. Um, estimate response time. This is how long, are you, how long does it take you to get to a client's property? All right. This could be massively improved by doing things like over the phone estimates. Estimate send time. How long does it take you for, to go from at the job, completing the estimate to actually sending the estimate? Very important. These are all things that I think are very, very important to track. Service area, your radiuses. This will tell you exactly how far you're booked out. There's just so much data that we're going to be able to pull and give you the cock. You know, this is what we call the cockpit. Um, this is literally your speedometer, your gas gauge, your temperature thermo gauge. And when you just step inside a car and driving a business without those things is the equivalent of driving a car without any sort of dashboard, not knowing exactly how much fuel is. And you're like, oh, I'm just kind of guessing. That's what most operators in their small businesses and service industries are doing. They don't really know their close ratio. They don't really know their attrition rate. They're just kind of driving until something crashes. And then, like, oh, I'm running out of gas. Oh, like I'm running out of customers. Oh, I need to spend my own marketing. Like, that's how most people operate their business. And my goal is to fix that by having the data, putting it in front of them, and then synthesizing it for them and telling them, this is what you need to do with the business, All right? Will it track material usage? Um, not yet. When we, probably towards the end of 2023, we're going to have like uh, the Gantt graphs for massive projects and then really diving deeper into a project-based job costing, things like that. Some of the, the stuff that LMN does currently. What was the factor at 50 to switch over to pay? 
Uh, I don't know exactly what you're saying. Sorry. Oh, um, what I was saying is if you're doing under 50,000 in annual revenue, that's like all the size business you're going to grow. You don't need, uh, like the cost of software starts to become relevant because if you're spending $200 versus $20 a month, that's a real impact on the business. When you're doing 300, 400, 500, a million dollars in revenue, it does not matter what you're spending on software. The difference between paying $200 and $500 is $300 a month, which is like less than 1% of your revenue for the year. And it will lead to five, six, seven, ten percent 10% efficiencies gained if the software is that much better. What other software will Copilot sync with? So we have what's called Zapier. If you haven't looked at it, check it out. It connects with lots of different software systems, over 4,000 apps. So Google, Google Earth, sorry, Google, Google um, Calendar. Uh, there's just a plethora of different ones. And then we create triggers on our end that then you can then facilitate through Zapier. Uh, with a bunch of like QuickBooks we already integrate with, et cetera. So check out Zapier. You can literally see which apps it connects with. And then we work with, on creating what's called Zaps inside of Zapier where the triggers are aligned. So that way, instead of us doing one integration every six months, we have integration with 4,000 different apps that you can then uh, go through, see which ones you want to use, et cetera. Um, I really want to work more on our MailChimp one. or Sorry, not MailChimp. Our... Uh, Calendly one uh, to be able to get it to where people can schedule estimates with you directly from your uh, website and it'll sync with your calendar and your CRM. We are wanting to switch from Jobber. Okay. Hey, Mike, will there be a phone integration with something like Ring Central or Dialpad? Yes, by the end of 2023, we will have Ring Central. All right. Caller is coming in from 703. Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> Hey, Mike, Carlos, we've spoken before. Uh, I just have a question. Um, you know, my business is around 550, and I just want to know, like, you know, considering I use, I'm using Service Autopilot, um, and I already have, like, their their master schedules and their master packages and their and our job notes in there, like, is it, is it like, and considering I'm probably going to start, you know, ramping up for spring rush around March, is it a wise decision to, you know, to try to switch all of those things over to Copilot, or or should I wait until the integration? Or what are your thoughts? Yeah, so there's never going to be an integration with Service Autopilot. Let me be clear on that. There will be a more smooth uh, onboarding process as we dial in each CRM. But again, in terms of what we have now, etc., it will still be able to do packages and routes, things like that. That's not going to be a problem. My philosophy on Service Autopilot is that until you hit a million plus in revenue. The amount of features they have is actually crippling people um, because creating these master schedules and master routes and cost matrices and co job costing is not actually what's going to move the business forward. It technically looks awesome. You can quote unquote automate the business. But I find people getting around the rabbit hole and spending so much time on working on these things that don't actually move the business forward. Here's what moves the business forward. Hiring and marketing. A CRM should take care of the other things that don't actually move the business forward like charging people, invoicing, estimates. That's what it should take care of. If you're spending a whole bunch of your time figuring out random automations and job costing and price matrices, and I, I literally see people automating things like that does not need automating. You should be focusing all of that time that you're spending all this like time on this random automation that's literally not going to affect anything and move the needle for your business. You should spend that time on hiring, training your crew, and marketing. Okay, That's what Copilot's going to focus on because I don't think – that when you get to the 99th percentile of organization, it moves the needle for your business. I do not believe that. I believe that going, though, from zero to 50% per uh, percentile of AI-driven decisions, having data about your business, having metrics about what is working and what is not working, who's you should, who, which customers you should cut and which customers you should raise prices on, that will change the business. And so I am not going to get in the feature race and the arms race for random adding of these type of features because I do not believe it's going to be what moves the business forward for the operator. All right. Um, when you start getting three, five, ten million million in revenue and you're doing massive projects or massive maintenance, that's where things like um, having Gantt graphs, um, project management, job costing starts to become important. Um, but I just see consistently people under a million dollars doing these things because it's like what everyone else is saying they should do. And those Operators are actually using it effectively, are doing multiple millions in revenue, and people doing three, four hundred thousand dollars should not be focused on these things. They should be focused on marketing and hiring and making sure their team is bulletproof and making sure that they're marketing their branding's on point to bring in new leads. That's what will move the business forward. 
That's why we focus on things like one click estimate emails, having a link where people can click on and get an estimate immediately. These are the things that will actually move the business forward, not job costing, not very detailed automations, not price matrices. We will add those things throughout 2023, but they are, they're not actually what's going to move the needle for most operators under a million dollars. It'll be figuring out the metrics in their business and like, oh my word, attrition is 68%. Here's how I can fix this. Da, da, da. Here's the three things you need to do to fix this problem. Oh, your close ratios dropped over the past three weeks. Here's why. You've not been getting back to estimates fast enough. Your time to close is way too high. Like these are the type of things that we will focus on because that's what's going to move the needle for the business owner. We will add the enterprise level features throughout 2023 for those operators doing two, three, four million where those type of massive feature requests um, and we, we will have those. But for the people doing a million or less, these type of like master packages and like this is a distraction for the thing that actually going to move your business forward, right? Next caller coming in from 703. I think this is the same person. Yeah, you called in already. Carlos, I think this hey, is Hey, Mike. What's up? Yeah, I, I don't know if you heard my message at all. I just uh, got taken out of the call, so I, I don't know if and I wasn't able to hear your response. So did you hear it? Yeah, we did. We got it. Sorry, I thought you were, if you listen to the video at the same time, you'll hear the whole thing. Okay, you, you got it all in? Yeah, okay. I did. Sorry about uh, that. Thank you. Man. You got it. All right, bye. Sorry about that. I was like, why is he calling back again? All right. Yeah, very good. Yeah, once you're in the call queue, maybe just have your video muted and then hop back in, and then you'll hear the answer once I take you out. Um. All right, what else are we going through? Uh, I asked you when we met, but I just want to clarify, will the work, app work with when the guys are in areas with poor cell service? With Lawn Pro, it does not, and you can, can't can clock in and have jobs or see the route. Um, we are improving this, and it will be better. Um, we will be adding in March, we will be adding the ability to live track the devices and have on a live map where they're all at. This will dramatically improve this as well. So it's a technical lift. This is not inside Lawn Pro. Service Autopilot kind of has it, but it's not great. Uh, some other softwares, again, same thing. It's just not great. We, we've always just tracked using truck trackers. Um, but this one's going to be really good. And uh, in terms of, I, I, can't, I can't say with confidence that it's going to be way better because we have not used it. So I don't want to overpromise here, but it, it should be significantly better than what Lawn Pro was in the past because we will have the ability to do live tracking on the devices. I've got eight months left on my annual contract with Service Autopilot. I'm strongly considering just eating that cost and switching to Copilot. If you have eight months left on the annual contract, definitely look at Copilot a lot before you make that switch. That's a, that's a lot of money to eat. Um, and you will need to make sure that it's worth your time. That being said, the vast majority of people will recoup the cost of Copilot by simply having the data to know when to follow up with people and having the suggestions of what they're doing wrong in their business. And getting an extra couple jobs because of that will pay for it. Um, I'm thrilled that service autopilot's adding like tipping this weekend, for example, that's a feature that we've been asking for four years. Um, that is a one month lift in terms of technical. Um, I know why they didn't and yeah, looking forward to watching your videos about this year. Cool. What's up, Vlad? Okay. I'm rocking the copilot. Thank you. Simply, will video compression for estimate videos be implemented immediately or is that later update? I think this will probably be rolling out in end of April, early May. It's on our list. And if you are on the copilot Facebook page, um, we will share exactly what we're working on. Just to be clear, the Facebook group will only be for paying members and we will scrub that on a monthly basis and kick people out that have like canceled or on the free, like you can't be on the free and be in the Facebook group because the Facebook group is going to be where I am at every two weeks on a Saturday. I will do a call like this just for user of the software um, as well as uh, I will share exactly what we're working on with our project management tool. We use monday.com and what exactly features we're working on. Um, and so I, I posted one like a couple weeks ago and right below that, I don't think you saw it. Yeah, I didn't post the on deck features on deck features. One of them is video compression, which is, some pretty cool tech that's coming out and uh, I'm pretty excited to implement it. All right. Next caller is from 480. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me. This is Carson Jones. Um, one feature I'd like to see that Service Autopilot currently does not do, I believe, is to send estimates in bulk and maybe have that pull from cut the field or something like that. We just found that a big time suck just sending out estimates one by one and wondered if you had a that in the plan to send uh, out estimates in bulk based on custom fields or measurements from their property. Yeah. 
Yep, that'll be later in 2023 when we do price matrixes. Um, so with price matrixes, that's something that we are working on. There is technical lifts to this. Why it's it's difficult um, because you, you whenever you're doing something bulk, you got to be very very careful of inputs um, because you can easily um, mess up a lot of things. And uh, when it comes to software, a mess up is like literally 10 to 100 times more impactful than doing 100 things correctly when it comes to users. So we have to be careful because if, if you allow an input that potentially is incorrect, like for example, a decimal place or three, if someone puts in three decimal places, does it do something wrong? There's so many different things we have to test for this um, when it comes to bulk anything. Bulk estimate sending is something you got to be very careful of because you can turn customers off very quickly and therefore if we mess up your account, not good. So um, it's something that we would do once we do price matrices. Price matrices will be summer 2023. I would expect something like bulk is probably early 2024, to be perfectly honest, just because of the amount of technical and testing that we have to do to ensure that we're not going to mess anybody up by having bulk estimates send. But it'll be based upon price matrices. Custom fields are already inside of Copilot, and you can create as many as you want. It's pretty cool. Um, and so there is definitely a way you could do it already, to be perfectly honest, using the automations that we have. It's just not what I would recommend using yet. Let us like build out and flesh it out to where it's actually a, a feature and not something you're kind of using the automations for. But using custom fields, it's definitely something you could actually work around currently. I would not, I'm not going to show it because I would not recommend doing it. There's too many ways to mess things up. Um, and I, I just consistently see people like getting this bulk thing and like all of a sudden a thousand estimates go out and like they're wrong or like the wrong service or something weird. And so, um, yes, we will have that in the future though, for sure. Probably early 2024, if I'm being perfectly honest, but the price, price matrixes will be in summer 2023. Jobber gives a dedicated phone line for two-way text and calls. Will Copa have something similar? Yes, we will, we will use integration with Twilio and it'll be very simple for two-way text um, in terms of that phone number. All right, next caller is coming from 216. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. 216, caller name, last name. Hello. Is yeah, hey, what's up? Hey, Mike. Good to, uh, good to talk to you. Absolutely. Um, so, first of all, I wanted to see um, about all season contracts. I don't know if you offer that to any residential. You're talking about like contracts in general, like 12 month contracts? Yeah. Um, or just for the cutting grass for the season? Yep. Yep. So we have contracts already built in. We also have packages. So a lot of people ask me about like the chemical side. We already have that ready to go. Um, and then, yeah, packages as well as 12 month contracts with level billing. It's already in there. Uh, and it's just very simple to use. Uh, it's my goal over the next year, to be perfectly honest with everyone, is I want to have the UI user interface, and the usability of Jobber, very simple, with the customizability and the depth of powerful uh, automations and features like Service Autopilot. That is literally like I'm going for the next 12 months. Um, after that, we will be innovating on top of that. But like, I feel like like everyone's asking, like, what's different about Copilot? Honestly, right now, it's the fact that I'm involved. That's like it, all right? There's a lot of other features. There's a lot of other people doing the same stuff. It's in 12 to 24 months when we start innovating on, with the AI, and we will be doing that throughout this year, but like we become painfully obvious that we're ahead of it. It'll be 12 to 24 months. So if you want to wait, that's fine. Totally fine. I'm not going to, you know, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I get it. Um, it's hard to move from CRMs. I would not recommend doing ch having change for the sake of change. Only change your, anything in your business if it's going to help and impact the business in a positive manner. Switching things up is not a good idea. All right. So in my opinion, if you ask me right now, what's different about Copilot? It's literally that I'm involved. I'm an operator. I understand what we need in this industry. And I'm going to be executing that very quickly. The amount of feature changes and the things that we'll be adding throughout the next 12 to 24 months, fantastic. Um, but there's not a whole lot different in terms of features or how we're operating. Like not a lot right now. It's simply the fact that I'm dedicated to this. I, I do not have to, I do not have to answer to anybody. Um, in terms of venture capital, in terms of the stock market, in terms of board, in terms of even my CTO is a minority stake owner. I respect him out to Wazoo. I give him space on the technical side, but he gives me full liberty on pricing, the business, branding, what features we're adding. I control all of that. And so um, that's why someone would join right now because they believe in, in myself and the leadership that we, we're uh, trying to put forward in the industry. And that's, and that's it. In 12 to 24 months, it'll become more a matter of, okay, the technology and what they're doing for the owner is so far beyond what anyone else is doing. And I'm thrilled out of my mind, thrilled out of my mind that other, other companies will follow what we're doing and they will start to emulate what we're doing 
um, with AI, they will follow exactly. I know, I just know it, but we'll be one to two years ahead. And so that's my goal. All right. Next caller is from 815. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Hey, Mike. Uh, my name is Jason. <clears throat> uh, you actually just, you, you addressed my uh, question in the chat, but I just had a qualifier. I, uh, I'm the one that has eight months left on my service autopilot contract. Okay. Um, the thing is, we do about 500000 in annual revenue. We've never had a CRM until a few months ago when we got service autopilot, and it's been totally overwhelming to me. Um, just spent so much time trying to figure it out. It's, it's beyond me. Yep. Um, and I'm trying, and I didn't even realize, I would stupidly signed up for an annual contract. I should have gone month by month. Yep. But what I'm wondering is, I want to switch to co-pilot just because I trust the situation here more. I like to use the look and, uh, you know, lay out like you're talking about better. But what I don't want to do is just start jumping around and, and throwing more money around kind of in chaos. I feel like, should I think about just sticking with our tried and true old, <laughs> old school methods for now so I don't just start flopping around in the water? Or does this seem like a logical decision to move forward with your software here? Does that make sense? Yeah. So I, if I was you, I, because you've pay, paid so much, I would just be careful. Uh, like you said, you don't want to be jumping around. Um, change for the sake of change is stupidity. So um, I would I would recommend if I was in your shoes is in February get the free version of Copilot, throw a few throw a few customers in there, uh, see how it looks in terms of estimating, invoicing the things you're actually using. Because my problem with Service Autopilot is the onboarding process. They sell you on the onboarding, and then they upsell you into like we'll take care of everything for you, which basically you're giving the keys to the most important features of the of the software to them because the UI is so. Um, it's just difficult, difficult. And, and the reason we like, we've onboarded hundreds of our franchisees or hundred plus into service autopilot. So like, I know exactly the onboarding pain, the process, like it's not easy and it's almost built that way for in, in the case of like, that's why there's certified advisors. And then they have a program where you literally pay on a monthly basis for them to like set you up and do everything. Like, I don't believe that's how it should be. I don't want to take the keys of like your automation, like, Hey, I'll take those. And then you can rent them from me. So, um, I, I understand the frustration. It's difficult to set up. And um, I would just say, you know, test out Copilot. We're not going to have some of the very in-depth level features, but I can guarantee you're not using those features inside Service Autopilot. The vast majority of their users are not. Um, and they would probably be better in terms of Copilot because it'll take less time to figure out and they'll be able to spend that time on the things that actually move the business forward, which is marketing and their team. That's it. And so I would just use the, use the free version, see, okay, am I going to shoot myself in the foot by, you know, I'm going to waste waste $3,000 by switching away from service autopilot. But does Copilot allow me this year to go from 500 to 750 because now I have time to actually focus on the things that matter in the business and have the data to be able to get a few more jobs, which would pay for the $3,000 in, in, you know, multiple times over. So that would be the, the framework I'd be looking through. Um, I don't believe we're going to have any great features or incredibleness that everyone's like, oh, you're so much different. I don't believe that's going to happen this year. Right? So Anyone that's like jumping up and down about features right now, I'm like, eh, you're probably gonna be disappointed uh, because we're not we're not going to be anything new or creative for probably 12 months. We're catching up. We're picking cherry picking the ones that we want from the different software packages. But I would definitely not jump into Copilot. Think it's gonna save the business. I would look at it objectively, see what the costs are, how much you're kind of quote unquote losing, and then just go from there in February. Thank you. Yeah, you got it, brother. Take care. Have a good one. Now, I've gotten probably hundreds now of emails about feature requests and feature like, are you going to have this feature? Are you going to have this feature? Um, let me be very clear about this. I, will, I am open to user feedback, but over the next 24 months, I have a very clear roadmap of what we're going to be developing, and no one's probably going to change that. And so, um, yes, I'm open to feedback, and I listen. And I will always be that way when it comes to user feedback, but I have a very clear path of what the software needs to become over the next 12 to 24 months, and we will execute against those goals. And so as much as I will listen to users, I will think, I will be honest with you sometimes. I'm like, we're just not going to spend time working on that. I don't think it's going to move the needle. And for you and your business, it might. Like one little feature, like if I could just have this one thing, it would change everything. I have to look at the aggregate of the industry and all of our users and say, what's going to be the best and what's going to differentiate them from their competition and give them a competitive edge. I do not believe that 98% of the features people pitched at me 
are actually going to move their the business of the industry for it might be their business because like they do a certain customization and packages or certain pricing method that they're using or they do things a certain way it might help them but i am looking at the entire industry and i'm looking ultimately at how do we have a competitive edge over any other competitor in your market that is not using our software and i truly believe that will become clear in 12 to 24 months but i have a very clear roadmap of what that looks like i'm not just like randomly taking features like oh that's a good idea and that's good i have a very clear roadmap and the part that I'm showing you on Monday is the top part, the things we're working on. There's literally pages of stuff we're going to be knocking out over the next 12 to 24 months. And um, I have a very clear roadmap. This is not a willy-nilly, hey, what do you guys think? I'm not going to be doing that. Like, I'll be perfectly honest. I'm not going to be like, oh, you want that feature? Great, we'll implement it. That's not how this is going to roll. This is going to be a benevolent dictatorship for the next 12 to 24 months because I have a very clear roadmap of what we need to get done to be able to catch up with the best features in the industry and then execute on AI and um, what I see in the industry. So that's not come across cocky. I just don't, I don't want you guys to think like, because we're new that you're going to somehow come in and you're like pitch features at me and I'm going to change my idea. That's not how it's working. All right. I'll be very clear about that upfront, to be honest. Like we have a very clear roadmap. The amount of features changes, the amount of innovation from Copilot over the next 24 months will be unparalleled. That has to happen. Um, I'm not going to like bend on things. So just, just want to be clear. Don't think you're going to come in here, like change my mind on a feature. All right. How well has the system been tested? SA always has problems when they do new releases. This is the big reason why we're doing these in waves in February to make sure that we have um, enough users in there and we'll be getting tests. So for example, we let you know, 100 people in there and then something's slowing down or something is breaking. We'll stop and put new users and then fix that. But I, I can't say that I know this because I don't have 10,000 users in the software right now, right? That being said, we are using the code base of Lawn Pro that has been developed for the past 15 years and has thousands of users in it already. And that has been refined, tested, ironed out. So I'm very confident, very confident we're not going to have those sort of problems. But I expect a few in the first few days. That's why we're going to do rollout like that um, and just make sure that everything is going smoothly. And uh, I will work 24-7 if there's problems that are preventing people from like sending out invoices and estimates and et cetera. So, um, yeah. What's up, Bestie? Okay, that's good. Routing features, marketing features. Yeah, so routing, um, we're going to use uh, what's called Trimble Maps. We do not use Google. We believe Trimble is better uh, for multiple reasons. Um, and you guys are going to see the impact of that immediately once you start using routing. Um, there's little stuff inside of our dispatch board that you're going to see just like awesome. Things I've always wanted um, that are little tiny things, and you'll just have to find out what they are. They're going to be great. Great little tips. Great little little treats hidden throughout um, that are going to be seemingly small, but pain points that people have done workarounds for years inside of other software systems. And uh, it's going to be great. In terms of marketing, uh, this is extremely important to me. Um, things like one-click estimate emails, you know, do we we'll already from day one be able to do batch emails, batch, batch SMS, um, and just much better UI than other softwares, in my opinion, uh, and the batch side of things. So batching out things. Uh, probably, let me be conservative. Probably in April, we'll have it nailed down with one-click estimate emails. Um, we've always done a workaround inside of Service Autopilot to make it happen, but this will be a, like a very clear path. It'll show you how to do that. It'll be great. It'll be, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm based in Ireland and currently using Lawn Pro. What's the biggest difference between it and Copilot? Honestly, it's it's going to be the features that are allowing you to scale and as well as the dashboard. Like from day one, KPI dashboard, the AI um, a lot of the, the features in the, uh, the dispatch board that allow for hundreds of, of uh, visits, those will be like the stronger things. So if you're scaling past 200,000, I'd probably use Copilot. If you're going to stay at 200,000 or less, and you're just going to say solo operator, a couple employees, just stick with Lawn Pro. You'll be very happy. And um, Patrick is still improving that software and, and maintaining it. But he's very clear that like that's for the smaller operator. The price point as well as the feature set is just for a smaller operator. You're not going to be able to scale millions of dollars in revenue uh, inside that software. You'll be able to import customer lists seamlessly from Yardbook to Copilot. Will card on file be transferred over as well? What credit card processing platform will be used within Copilot? We'll be using Stripe and PayPal. So both of those will work. Um, and you will have the option to add in PayPal if you want or if you do not, it's up to you. Uh, in terms of Yardbook to Copilot, Whatever their CSV file is, a lot of that information can, can come into Copilot. It's not going to transfer your cards over on file automatically. If you have Stripe currently with Yardbook or another processor, there is a way to contact them and have them connect to your 
customers. I do not believe this is a big deal. The reason I do not believe this is a big deal because you do not require we do not require a client portal to have username and a login and password that they then change their card information. It's super laborious. You could literally send one email with one button. They open it up. It opens up with a credit card and they punch in the information. It's all encrypted through Stripe and it's connected on the back end. I do not believe cards on file in another software is the reason you should not change. If that's like the main reason, trust me, that is not going to be a problem because we do not require all of this craziness of security that is required because we're using Stripe, which is massive they are the number one player when it comes to processing payments online so like um i would just say that don't use that if that's the only reason why you wouldn't switch i would not switch to copilot if you have very intricate automations price matrices and job costing that you use all of the time that right now would be the reason i would say do not switch and if you use those things all the time i would wait that'd be my personal opinion how will copilot payments fees and payment payout sync to QuickBooks online. I'm not 100% sure what you're what you're asking here. They're going to they're going to sync. There's already an integration um and it is only with QuickBooks online, it's not with that QuickBooks desktop and I'm not 100% sure what you're asking. It will sync though. It will come across into QuickBooks. We'll be able to create estimate templates, schedule templates, sell package. Yes, all three of those I would say yes to. So, estimate templates, you'll have a document editor uh, drag and drop pictures, et cetera. I will be adding in the ability to do email links or one click estimate emails to opt in and out of things uh, probably later in the spring. One of the biggest things I hate about SA is the customer payments, the customer journey of this is horrible. I agree. Any thoughts? What about letting a customer make an account with lo Google login, Facebook, et cetera? There is no login required. And the, I know why clearance inside of service all has to do it. I understand all of that. Um, Again, I do not want the keys of my business being held by them. And so if the credit card information is being held hostage and it will not be able to be transferred and I can't go access it, I don't like that. With Stripe, you have set up a separate account, you integrate with Copilot, and then you have you control Stripe. That is your account. And so if you leave Copilot, you have all your customers' data, you have all their credit card information, there you go. So we are a CRM platform. We are not currently a payments platform. And the only reason we would ever roll out of payments is if we can beat the functionality of Stripe. All right. And so um, for now, though, we will focus on CRM. We will not focus on trying to monetize your payments. And that's why these all these CRMs are being bought out by payment processors and credit card processing companies is because they have a monopoly on who you, who the, you can use to process and they make money off the top of every single transaction. And that's where their money's at. So that's why they make sure that they lock you in on those things. And um, I don't think that's very good for the operator. With service auto plat, clearance charges roughly 3.7% for credit card processing, but they don't have an area we can add a surcharge to for transactions. How will Copilot handle this for fees? Yes, we have the ability for you to pass on the credit card fees to the customer. We also have the ability to automatically charge people when they're overdue a certain amount of dollar amount automatically. Um, we charge the 2.9% from Stripe straight across the board. And I think there's 30 cent transaction fee. There's no PCI compliance. There's none of that garbage. Um, and then for ACH, we charge, I think it's 1% up to $5. And again, that's exactly what Stripe charges. You can go check my math, right? I signed up for long-term web design. I'm already on the co-pilot wait list. How will the two intertwine with each other? It'll be probably summer to fall of 2023 that we will have this integration. To be clear, you will not need a lawn care web design site in order to have an integration with your estimate input form, all right? However, I have to say this because if anyone has ever tried with any other software to, oh, by the way, let me just say this real quick. What people are getting charged on processing versus Copilot will literally cover the entire cost. If you're doing 500 to a million, even in revenue, the cost savings of your processing from other companies that are tacking on fees on top of it, on top of the uh, the interchange and on top of you know the percentage, that alone will cover the cost of Copilot. So if everyone's if anyone's balking out the price, I'm like, look, those aren't changing. I'm very confident our pricing is very fair, especially for a larger operator that's going to make a lot of that money back on processing fees that are currently going out the door. Let me just be clear on that. Um, yeah. So in terms of estimate request forms. Um, being integrated with the site and with the CRM. Long career web design, the reason I've said that um, it's going to be a feature is because we control the front end and the back end of long career web design, the design and the CRM. So we can make sure things are perfect. 
Whereas in most other CRMs, because they don't control the front end, the design of your website, they make a change in the CRM, an update, and it messes up your estimate request form. The forms get weird. They start going to weird places. They get blocked. The code starts to show up on the form. They don't look pretty. So we will have the ability to integrate and bring leads over from your any website. However, longer web design, because we control the front and the back end, we can make sure that the design is already updated before we make an update on the CRM side and make sure that the design is beautiful and make sure it's customized and more integrated into your website. Because I can look at any website and know if it's a job or form, a yard book form, a service auto platform, because the design is not integrated, it does not look good. It doesn't look good on mobile and it looks trashy. Long care web design clients will be able to have a much more integrated feel because we control the front end and the back end, the design and the actual implementation of the software. So that's that's a big plus of being a long care web design client. Um, but it, we will have the ability for other, everyone else to also submit estimate request forms to be integrated in. I'm looking at summer to fall of 2023 for it to be for everybody. All right. So um, keep that in mind. Will Copilot have hardscape templates similar to LMN? No, not from the beginning. This would be something 2024 will tackle. Is the routing optimization, the visual and multiple routes, more like what Jobber uses or, or Yardbook, SA, et cetera? I would say it leans more towards what Service Autopilot currently looks like. Good to see you too. Will there be a feature to accept, decline, or modify quote by customer? Yes, as well as send in a work request. Will this work with Zapier? Yes, it will. Zapier. Will we be able to use close ratio and revenue by lead source? Will we be able to see close ratio? Yes, and revenue by lead source. Uh, the revenue by lead source is a metric on the KPI dashboard that we will have, because we have it in reports right now, but not on the dashboard. But it'll probably be added to the dashboard, the KPI dashboard, the cockpit by summer. But we have it in a report right now. Lompro is the best startup CRM. I would agree with that. Mike, do you need to track those clients that call for a quote but decline after you give them your minute? Okay, wait a second. Mike, do you need to track those clients that call for a quote but decline after you give them your minimum starting price? Um, oh, I think this is more of a business question. Gotcha. Okay, I would say you should try to get their contact information prior to giving them the quote so that you can market to them in the future. If we sign up on Copilot, will it send us a confirmation that we're in the wait list? No, it will not. Because um, if we were doing that, it was creating too much. Uh, we had to do more uh, captures. And if you submit the form, and it takes you to the page. You're done. You're good. Everyone's in. There's not a glitch. Calendly. Yeah, it'll be probably. It's already through Zapier. You could do it. Um, but I want to make an actual uh, hard code integration um, this summer. Conservatively this summer. Snow Dispatch. We have what we call a quick dispatch. It's very similar to what Snow Dispatch is like. Uh, you can create your your uh, a route and then click one button and it moves it over into your dispatch board. Um, yes, it's just a very simple. Um, we have an entire department at command center just to, it's totally separate just for Snow Dispatch because it's so weird and different inside of other CRMs. And um, it's very simple inside of Copilot. What CRM are you using now? We use multiple ones at, at Service Autopilot, or sorry, at, at Command Center, including Service Autopilot. What do you see as a large, as, by the way, we are still supporting Service Autopilot. I don't I want to be against anyone here. I know I'm pretty passionate about Copilot, so I come across like I'm against people. I'm not, right? I want other C CRMs to do well. I want their users to do well. And I'm actively trying to help other CRMs improve their user experience, their technology, and the way that they treat their customers. So let me be very clear. I'm not against anyone. I'm not trying to get anyone to fail. That's not the objective here. I have talked to the executives of a lot of these CRMs and I'm trying to help them create user groups and create the features that people need. And if anyone's in these other CRMs, you might have noticed over the past three months, a lot of them developing features that we've been asking for for years. All right. So just be very clear. I do not look at this as a zero sum game. I truly believe that um, I want these, these softwares to do well. I want them to succeed. I want them to grow. Um, and I do not look, I do not have a scarcity mindset of like, in order for us to be good, they have to be bad. That is stupid. So it's the number one thing that we look for at Augusta Lawn Care to screen out franchisees. If they have that sort of mindset, not going to work well. Always no nonsense business info. That's why I watch you. Thank you, brother. As an employee, how user friendly is Copilot, i.e., like communicating other employees and owner through app or interface? Very, very simple. The app is what I think is going to be our unique differentiating factor, even from day one. The design is beautiful. 
It's um, extremely well put together. Um, and I, I'm very excited about the, the mobile app. Um, there's still a lot I want to do after February on the mobile app. And a lot of uh, March, April is going to be designated to my the mobile app and just make it better and better. But I think people are going to love the, the mobile app. Um, Jobber, I think they nailed their mobile app. I think it's pretty good. Um, and so, yeah, in terms of interface, texting between employees will be able to be on the app inside Copilot, et cetera. How will it work with landscape construction, commercial lawn care, and commercial snow removal? It will work well. I would say if you're doing three to $5 million in revenue, I would wait one more year so that we can have some big project management tools that are significant inside like Aspire and LMN that are really, really good. Um, we'll be taking those uh, throughout 2023. Things like you know, a Gantt graph, which is like you get to see over the course of a project, you know, what segments of time you're on each part of the project, um, things like that. But if you're doing under a million or even two million, I, I would say that you're still going to get better implementation from Copilot. I would wait until the automations are fully working. Yeah, like the automations work well. Honestly, we have 30 to 40 pre-built automations that I have a hard time coming up with a use case that that customizability inside of these other platforms can rival. And more importantly, people actually use them because they're not like rocket science. And you don't need an advisor to show you how to put them together. They're very pre-built and you can change things. You can change it, you know, how many, how much delay, you can change the emails, you can change the text messages. It's all very customizable, but it's not as drag and drop and like where you can basically make infinite numbers of automations. Um, it prevents you though from having infinite loops. It prevents you from um, sending out things that don't make sense to customers and they shouldn't be getting them. And it prevents, more importantly, you from not knowing how to do it. And um, it's very simple. And I genuinely believe the 30 to 40 pre-built automations that we have, less than 2% of users inside of Infusionsoft, Service Autopilot, these other companies are using things beyond what we currently offer with the pre-built ones. So it's likely that we will probably bring in Keep, which is Infusionsoft, um, as an integration so that those extra 2%, they can just integrate with those very, very in-depth, complicated uh, automations and still roll with our software in 2023. Uh, we'll probably be working with Simple Growth, Mike Callahan, uh, to be able to roll that out to users uh, so that they can have that very, very in-depth uh, level of automations if they need it right from 2023. Next question is coming from 828. Welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? Good. How you doing? Uh, not too bad. Uh, I just had a question. I'm, uh, I think my company, I work for it, has a, a major layoff and... Uh, I think I might be maybe in, in on it. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, 55 years old. You think I'm too old to, uh, to actually start like a lawn care business? Uh, what, what was your position at the other company? What I, were you doing? I was like, I, 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 kind of like a manufacturing operator. I was, operated a machine and I, I was there for like 26 years. And I, I actually did all kinds of jobs. Yeah, like what I, and test and, yeah, like what I would recommend doing is you know go get another position in that field so that you can just pay the bills, but then on the weekend start picking up some lawn care customers, right? Get a few here and there, see how you like it, see if yeah. you enjoy the work. Um, I I would assume that you probably don't. Uh -huh. I, I'm making an assumption here that you don't have the capital to just immediately get a truck trailer and hire somebody. If you did, that would be an option. No, no. So I would just no. do it on the side for now, right? Uh -huh. Pay the bills, get that job in that same industry. And then, you know, as you build up clientele, you'll eventually be able to hire someone. And, you know, the goal would be that by the time you say 60, you're not having to be in the field doing the physical labor and you can focus more on running the business. Yeah. But for now, make sure it's an industry uh -huh. that you enjoy, something you want to do for the next five, 10 years, and that you feel like you could uh, get a handle on the business side and then allow the, the operation side to be outsourced. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Awesome. Best of luck to you. Uh, uh all right, let's keep going through here. I like the price matrix in SA. We use them daily. Yep, and we're going to have that by summer, hopefully sooner, but let me just say summer. How much does it cost? There is a, on copilotcrm.com, there is a cost panel. If you would like to be in the rollout in February, make sure you put your name on the form. How will the estimate compare to service output? Currently, you use square footage to set pricing based on the price matrix and the services. Yep, so we don't have price matrices yet. It will be coming out here pretty soon. Um, and... I would say that if you're just using it for square footage, 
You could literally, if you wanted to switch to Copilot sooner, you could literally just have those in Excel and do it that way and then bring the number over. Uh, but literally within the next few months, um, by the summer, we will have price matrices to where you type in the, the uh, square footage, brings in the price and automatically. Vehicle dash cam feature. We do not have that yet. I don't see that as being a huge differentiator inside the CRM in terms of why you need an integration. So it's probably not something that we will um, focus on in 2023. Potentially 24, 24, but I would lean on this more as a Zapier uh, integration, not internal inside the CRM. There's not, I don't feel like there's a lot of inherent uh, advantages until you start using AI to track movement and speech. The ACH alone is worth it to me. We have a lot of time and investment in service autopilot. Okay, let me just stop here. You should never look at any investment and look at the past that you won or lost and somehow think that that is going to impact the future. Would it be stocks, real estate, the type of CRM you use, your business? If you have emotional and investment in the past that has no bearing on what the future is going to be, keep that in mind, all right? Any plans to have advisors like Simple Growth to be able to help contractors with setup implementation? Yes, I've contacted Mike Callan from day one. He was one of the few people that I was talking to the past few months. Simple Growth will be able to do on uh, implementation and setup, um, as well as likely in the spring having their more sophisticated automation integration with Keep and then allowing uh, users of Copilot to be able to be onboarded using Simple Growth. Um, that being said, my goal is to where you don't need an advisor to get set up. It should be simple enough. The tutorial should be simple enough. I will make the tutorials, all right? Um, and so, yeah, I, I don't believe that we, I do not want the software to ever be where you need a certified advisor just to get implemented and get started. Now, if you want deeper level things like integrations with Keep and Infusionsoft with those level of customizability with automations, that's where someone like Simple Growth will be there for that, right? They will probably be helping me out in like, March and April. So I would anticipate Simple Growth to be able to onboard and implement a lot of these things. And even if you really like someone to set, if some people like people, other people setting up their software, I personally I like to know what's going on. If you like that though, probably by March, April, Mike and the team at uh, Simple Growth will be able to support you. Will there be an equipment maintenance tracker that will give a notification or alert to say like oil changes? Such? Yes, absolutely. There will be. There's already automations built around assets that you input and then also where you can travel all your equipment maintenance for each um, asset. Will the free version be free forever? I do not know that. Can't guarantee it. Um, we'll just see how things move forward. But um, the goal is that someone can get started, get 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 mowing customers or whatever customers, whatever industry. And I feel like by the time you hit 50, uh, now it's a matter of the, the business can afford it and the proof will be in the pudding of the software and the power of it by then. So again, like the, as you use the, more, the software more, you're going to see this once you guys get going. As you use the software more in Copilot, because AI is regenerative and it begins to learn from the data and how you operate, the power of the software will become more evidently clear of how powerful it is as you use it more. The more inputs we have, the more AI can use those inputs to tell you like, people will be blown away when it's like, based on this input and this input and this input, we think this is going to happen in three weeks. You should hire someone today. Based on this and this and this, you should cancel next week's job because you're going to be running into Saturday and Sunday. Like that's there. We are building on this stuff. And the more inputs we have and the more people use the software, we'll be able to give them incredible insights, incredible insights. It's going to blow people's mind. I'm looking forward to the screenshots of like, how in the world did this software know this? And then it happened. Um, for example, let me give you a little teaser. All right. Based upon precipitation rates, we can be able to tell you, hey, based upon next week's precipitation, we expect you to be 10 to 15% overbooked. You should A, make sure that work in Monday, Monday and Tuesday, you do more jobs, or B, you're going to have to cancel this specific project based upon its budget hours because otherwise you're going to be working next weekend. And if you're fine with that, great. But just keep in mind, we warned you. That's what Copilot does. It gives you a little, hey, we think this is up. This is our recommendation. And so I think it's going to blow people's mind. And I think it's going to really start when once some people have used it for an entire year. Once people have used it for an entire year, there's so much data. And the reason I'm saying this is because like, I'm working these on most of my nights right now um, and just trying to type out triggers and alerts and how all the work in the back end and what data points we're pulling from. And uh, yeah, after a year, there's, there's a lot that we can do. Again, if you want to call in 361-733-3332, thank you all for coming on this Saturday. How hardscape friendly will the CRM be? Most CRMs are always lawn care based. Um, it, will, it absolutely can do it. 
I'm telling you, it can do these projects. It's not going to have the features. I would say if you're two, three, four, five million and you're doing projects like hardscaping, like hundred, two hundred thousand dollar jobs, just give us a second. All right. Give us a second to be able to catch up with the likes of LMN that they do some really cool project management tools um, that we will be um, duplicating. How do we know if we are going to be in the first wave of users? I signed up. You don't know. <laughs> we have hundreds of people that have signed up for it. And so we will basically start at the top of that list and keep working our way through. I can guarantee everyone will be able to get in by the end of February. All right. So we'll start rolling it out probably the first or second week of February and we'll just keep going with it. And I'll probably just increase how many people we're putting into it just to make sure we don't overload anything. And in case there is a bug, we address it when there's 10 or 15 people inside the software and not thousands. Again, we are using the code base from a software that is 15 years old and it already has tens of thousands of users. All right. So I don't expect there to be like some crazy thing, but there's always things with, when you change as much design and we've already added a lot of features, et cetera. Um, the biggest thing that will probably have the bugs is going to be the KPI dashboard because I can test every single thing in my brain of like ways to break it, but someone will figure a way to like do a negative value in an invoice and it like throws a monkey wrench inside the data. Stuff like that will probably happen. But those are currently like the speedometer on your, on your car. And if they break, you kind of know. It's like, okay, I know I don't have a negative attrition rate, okay? So things like that will be pretty obvious and we'll fix those. But anything in terms of like the structure of invoicing, estimate, routing, all of that is the same code base that's been used for 15 years on Lawn Pro and they've ironed those things out. Jobber routing is terrible. I agree. How hardscape friendly will the software be? Oh, I did that, sorry. Mike, what is, did we? Yeah, for, for the hardscape guys, um, I understand the frustration and we are hearing this loud and clear um, and it will be great. We are we are really building the software in two different directions. One, one-time jobs, projects, hardscaping, this could be uh, replacing a hot water heater, this could be replacing a roof, and then you have recurring work, right? Those two different business models, like they're two different business models. It's how I look at it. It's how we're building the software in terms of a lot of different things. So, but if you're a hardscape massive company right now, like, 2 million plus, I'd give me a year because I, I need several key uh, project management tools that we do not have right now. What is the sweet spot for the software in terms of revenue size for one location to design and build and commercial maintenance? I would say currently, I would say our sweet spot is 200,000 to a million. Uh, that would be my recommendation uh, for people to join Copa today. I would say that in 12 to 24 months, it'll be 400,000, no, 300,000 to like 10 plus million. Like we're going for the enterprise level user. And that's why I need 12 to 24 months to get there. Um, and that's my objective. I need a software that is easy to get into. That's why I said 300,000, 200,000 right in there. Because it needs to be user friendly. But I genuinely believe I can make a software that you can also scale up to 10 million and you don't have to like jump three times from softwares. I truly believe you can do that. I know how it's like, look, there's certain features that a, a $200,000, $300,000 operator does not need compared to a $4 million. I'm not going to have Gantt graphs for a, um, a $200,000 operator. They do not need them. I'm not going to have complicated automations for two hundred, three hundred thousand. They do not need them. They are wasting their time building these automations that are super customizable. Give them 30 or 40, like we currently have their pre-built. It'll do 99.9% .9 of what they need. And until you're doing 5, 6, 10, 10, 15 million, you don't need to worry about those things. Now, we also need integrations, though, with things like Ring Central, so that you can have a call center because you have 10, 20, 30 million dollars in revenue. You need these integrations. So that's what I'm working over the next 12, 24 months. Do you collect our customer data such as ad address email? What does that mean? Do you collect your our customers' data such as ad address email? Um, if any software says that they do not collect this information, you should be scared because they're they're keeping it on their servers. So yes, we are keeping it. It is on our on the servers, but we're not using it for anything. Um, the one thing that I will use Copilot data for is to be able to talk to Copilot in a very educated manner of trends. I will be able to say what average attrition rates, not as a hypothetical or calling an average of, you know, 200. This is what like landscape magazines, uh, home service industry, trade shows and trade industry magazines. They use surveys as to get this data. I will have the data and I will be able to tell users inside Copilot, this is what's happening. And here's what we're seeing compared to last year. And when I go into a recession, I will be pulling data over year over year. And I will be saying, this is exactly what we're seeing. This is what we're seeing with, with costs. This is what we're seeing with attrition rates. This is what we're seeing with marketing spend. Like, 
I will absolutely use the data internally inside of Copilot to be able to extrapolate exactly what's happening inside of our industries and be able to give the users a, a, a unique advantage. Next caller is coming from 480. Welcome to the show. Hey, uh, name's Bennett in Arizona. I just had a quick question. Um, I'm not sure if you already touched on this, but there's a CRM called Go High Level, if you've heard of it. Is there any like similarities or what's the advantage to yours versus go high level? That makes sense. What specifically do you like specifically about theirs? Uh, for instance. So I'm still working on integrating that into my business, but just the automating, um, I know it's got tons of capabilities, so I don't know it all that super well. I just know of another business that uses it that does really well. And, they like it a lot and so i just didn't know if you know that if yours is similar to go high level at all yeah no like there's definitely features inside there that they they do are cool they're really for marketing they're for agencies they do white labeling of crms we are not white labeled we own all of this um so there's differences that they really focus on the agency side of things and the marketing side but they are not going to focus on the CRM side, which is the actual databasing of invoicing, estimates, estimate creation. They do pieces and parts of it. They don't focus on it. Uh, they are much more focused on the agency side. So um, there's, again, going to always be great parts of that. For example, they have a lot of integrations like MailChimp, Zoho, um, you know, Stripe. They have a lot of these integrations that accountantly around uh, really the marketing side. Our goal is to be able to have that, but then also have the CRM side, the automation side, and parts that they white label or bring in and just just um, connect with. So um, I, I have not used them in terms of actually like inputting data and, and doing that. But based upon what I've seen and, and from their demos, that's kind of what I gather. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Cool, you got it. Next caller is coming from, I think, oh, they, they were last on air today. So this is probably a repeat caller. Oh, this is Alan, 909. What's up, brother? Hey, quick, another quick question for you. Hey, call centers, we use active call centers now. What call center would you recommend that would be a good merge with Copilot? You mean like a, a service or are you talking about software? Yeah, call service. Yeah, like Jill's call center is an example. They answer all your calls. Uh, and some of us don't have a command center access. Yep. So all these call centers are going to use software. And then our job as a CRM is to integrate with those softwares. So for example, like Ring Central, if they use Ring Central, they would be able to, you know, integrate a little bit easier. Um, and we will have the ability to have like uh, these uh, these services to be able to have like multiple logins and be able to, to log into multiple accounts, et cetera. Um, Cause we need that for our, our command center at Augusta. So, um, you know, it'll be optimized because we need it for Augusta. It's going to be 10 times better than what we've used in the past. And so um, we'll allow those services to, to plug in if needs be. But um, it'd be more about the software, right? So like if we integrate with something like uh, Ring Central and they use Ring Central, that, then we're good. If they can integrate with another phone service that is with Zapier, uh, they could probably do it from day one, right? So it's just a matter of us setting up the triggers and uh, going from there. Hi, Mike. Is Copilot a good... Is Copilot good for a brand new company just starting out? I I like everything you said. Copilot is going to have. I don't want to jump around to different CRMs. Only if your plan is to grow the business above two hundred thousand. If you're just going to stay at one employee, if you're just going to, um, you know, stay under two hundred thousand for the next five ten years, I would just stick with something like Lawn Pro, Yardbook, um, Jobbers. Okay, even though like their lowest level plan, I would just stick with those. Will this software merge more effectively with a website that is with lawn care web design? Yes. I kind of talked about that a little bit briefly before. It will merge with all websites probably by summer and fall. We'll have the form side of things. But with lawn care web design specifically, it will integrate better because we control the front end and the back end, the design and the, the, the brains of the operation with the code. Hello, Mike. I'm 55 years old. Am I able to start a lawn care business? What's your thought? I think I talked to this person on the phone already. It's not about age. It's about your current health conditions. Can you stand the heat? Can you walk around the equipment? Yeah, we talked to him on the phone. Sorry, I'm just still catching up. I'm 25 minutes behind on the chat. All sounds great. I looked into Copilot when I, I moved back and reopened, working on other ventures at the moment. Catch you later. What will the price point cost at this time? Yep, so if you just go to copilotcrm.com slash, ooh, mercy, I don't know that. Just go to copilotcrm.com, there's a pricing tab, and then um, you'll be able to see all the pricing options there. Hey, Mike, I'm mostly taking checks now for payment. Do you suggest we switch enti entirely to credit cards and ACH transfers when we switch to Copilot? Is it worth the fees? 
How do you suggest I go about it? I highly recommend doing this, honestly. Um, and now I have no foot in the game in terms of payment side. Like we don't make any money if you spend more money on credit cards or ACH. We just give you, we're getting charged from Stripe. So um, I do recommend this 100%. It's going to help your cash flow massively. And if you can increase the speed at which you are collecting, and that's a, a KPI that we have inside the cockpit, how fast you're getting your money, um, it'll, it'll allow you to grow much quicker. In the future, will Copilot tell us when to hire and fire employees, also clients as well? Yes. It'll tell you when we think we sh you should be hiring based upon your, the trajectory of your budgeted hours, again, based upon inputs you're giving us. Um, and it'll also, same thing with the cl clients. It'll tell you which customers are your least performing. It'll tell you which ones are the furthest away from, like, which, which ones are reducing your, um, your uh, route density, et cetera. How much do we need to tip you to get on the first week? <laughs> no, we're just going to do it by whoever was on there first. Do you think the coming recession will have any impact, any inf effect on selling in areas of the country where median home prices never go down in general, even during the 08 recession? Um, a recession across the whole country is going to affect even these areas. Um, even though it might not affect the housing prices, housing is just one piece of a recession. Um, and so it, it will still affect it because discretionary, like if, if everyone in that market, typically those markets that are insulated the most in terms of home prices are the ones that have the most retirees uh, because they move less, they have a lot more wealth and it's insulated typically from recession because they have a lot more money. However, when they're, when their uh, retirement accounts are 30, 40, 50% down, it will impact their spending habits. Is app, is mobile app friendly? Is it, is mobile app friendly? Yes, it is friendly. <laughs> it is nice. I'm excited. I can't wait. Thanks, brother. Are automatic payments kept behind the enterprise payroll? Are automatic payments... Can we still process payments with card on file and less expensive? Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So the automatic payments, so we're automatically in the month, they would just charge their card without you having to do anything. Yes, that is behind the enterprise level. In terms of processing payments on card on file, you can still do that inside of the lower plans. But in terms of having it all automated, that's going to be in the top one. So one thing that is like, I'm going to say this because I want every software to do this. It's it's a no-brainer. It'll take, if I'm speaking to CRMs right now, this will take you less than a week to code. And as long as you have good, um, I want to be careful. If you, it, in terms of your security with your payments, you got to figure that out. However, this is one thing that is a no-brainer for this industry. Like, Why do people not do this? Okay, We're going to do this inside of Copilot in the summer. Okay, It's not right now, but in, in summer, we will have this completely dialed in. Two things. Number one, why is it that when someone accepts a quote, you can't just have where they pay the deposit? So if you have a $5,000 job, you can just set a threshold. Okay, anything over 1000 I want 50% down. Great. They accept the job that's $3,000. Before they click accept, it says, hey, you need to put your card on file and make a 50% deposit. Click, put your card information here. That way, when they click accept on the, on the quote and you get a notification, the 50% the down deposit is already done. You don't have to go then kind of collect it and then get the job on the schedule and there's like this weird limbo area. It's easy stuff. For another thing, why is there just not a setting where you go into a setting, you check a box, whether or not you want credit cards to be on file all the time. And then in order for them to click accept on a quote, they have to have a card on file. This is not rocket science. This is simple stuff that would make a lot of people's lives easier instead of, okay, if you want cards on file right now, you're gonna have to send emails and you have to have follow-up emails. And if they don't get their card on file, you're like, I've got to cancel your quote. You're not gonna do service. This is ludicrous. These are simple things um, that I wish every software would do. I'm gonna do it myself and I hope they all follow. I hope all of them knock it out of the park. All right? Because it's just a pain in the butt. I skipped over your question. That's not fair. Where'd it go? Sam, Sam. I'm scrolling up. I'm scrolling up. I did this one. Sam? Convicting me of things. I'm going up higher now just to check. See what you did now. Convicting me of all this. Let's see here. Sam, Sam, Sam. No, I got it. I nailed that question. Hit it out of the park. <laughs> you can say it again if, if I actually didn't miss it. Sorry. Will you be able to send quotes and invoices via text like Jobber? I love that feature. Yes, you will be able to. Thanks for always thinking and making our lives easier. Blessings. How would transferring between my current CRM Yardbook into Copa say mid-season? I know Yardbook pretty well and don't want to have to learn a whole new system when things get busy. Yeah, so um, I would say join up in February, see how hard it is. I think most people are going to be blown away how simple the UI is. And then the, the more enterprise-level features you can unlock and, and, and move deeper if you want to. But I do not believe that the transfer from Yardbook to our system will be 
complicated. I think there's going to be features inside of Copilot that will blow your socks off compared to what Yardbook currently has and will save you a lot of time, especially if you're starting to grow past 100, 200,000 in revenue. GPS for the vehicle in the future. Um, in March, we will have the ability to be able to GPS on the mobile devices for all your users. And then down the road, we will have an integration with a company that will actually plug into the, into the trucks. But we're not, that's not the beginning. Um, but in terms of GPS for the, for the employees, that will be there. And it will be a whole lot better than other softwares that currently use that, that system. And the reason is because they're running on an old tech platform that's going to block a lot of those. Um, yeah. How about an onboard new employees feature? Um, we thought about this. This is not my highest priority. It is on the list. Um, this is, I would anticipate this to be more a 2024 thing. Um, the reason for that is because if you try to do employee onboarding for any one company, it'd be easy. If you try and do it for 10,000 different companies, it could become so vanilla that it's not great. So we will have this. I know LMN is working on this right now too. And so I'll be watching what they roll out in 2023. Um, but this is not something high on my list. I'm just being honest. Okay. Will Copa have budgeting? No, it will not have budgeting. It will not have job costing either at the beginning. This is something that we will roll out later in the year for, uh, especially for project uh, management tools and design build. Uh, I would recommend LMN, their free version for the budgeting. It would be the thing that I would recommend. Again, I do not believe that budgeting is what most people should be focused on in this industry. I just don't. Because most people, the inputs, they get, like your budget is only as good as the inputs you give it. And most in people's inputs are totally messed up. And so they're putting data into this thing. It's like telling them this information that is actually false. And so my objective using AI is take the actual data, not synthesized data that you popped into a budget. Because that's false data. 95% um, of people that I see make a budget, the numbers that they're putting in are incorrect. They are not putting their cost of goods sold correctly. They are not putting in their overhead correctly. And then they spit out, it spits out information that is incorrect. I want to take the actual data in their CRM without a filter and then be able to say, this is what you should be doing. Um, just to be clear. How easy will it be to upgrade to higher tiers if you start a low earn? It'll be super simple. We'll be able to add clickable links and estimates we're sending out to clients for things like terms of service, video overviews, et cetera. Yes, this will be one of our, this is on deck. So this is probably going to be an April, May feature. Uh, it's called email links. It's called uh, one click estimate emails. It's called opt in, opt out buttons, basically to trigger uh, tags being added inside the software. This will be a late spring functionality. Please make a dark mode for web and mobile, please. <laughs> this is actually not super difficult. So I could actually probably do this pretty quick. Um, I just don't want to deploy my resources to that. I don't think this is going to differentiate us right now. So give me these type of things that are like, I get these are nice. I'm not going to deploy stuff like resources towards that. Is there going to be a way to look at the invoice and estimates before they get sent out to check for issues? Yes, there will be. Will Copilot integrate with PVP? Yes, later in 2023, there will be. Okay, dark money. Yes, yeah, so we get it. <laughs> you can actually change this inside your browser, by the way, to make this automatic. Um, just FYI. Call service company that would... Okay, we talked about this one. Jobber has a seamless estimate approval process where we can require a deposit, get signature, and save current file in one fail swap. Will Copilot be similar? Yes. Um, in terms of one thing I don't know if Jobber has, correct me if I'm wrong, is I don't think they have the ability to require... Actually, I think they did. They might have this now. Require the current file before they accept the quote. They have the process where you can add a card, but I don't know if they have a setting where you have to require it before accepting. But yeah, I like Jobber a lot. I really, really do. Um, I just don't think it serves the enterprise level user very well once they've grown very big. And I don't think they'll ever try to because their focus is the small business operator. Um, that's where their niche is and that's where they've been crushing it. So the UI is great. The simplicity of getting stuff is great, but then there's not that next layer to allow a company to really scale up. And so most people jump out of Jobber and go into like Service Autopilot or LMN or Aspire to get those more enterprise level uh, uh, features. Use you... Would you, probably would, would you be able to set up email marketing right away or will you need Zapier and MailChimp still from start? Email marketing is already inside the software, uh, bulk messaging, et cetera. Um, in terms of Zapier and MailChimp, that is possible. You can absolutely do that. But in terms of what Copilot comes out out of the box, it already has the, lawn, uh, the uh, email marketing side of things. That's amazing. I have to create an invoice now for the deposit. Okay, yeah, so 
that's the part I want to get around. That's going to be a feature. That one's on deck as well. So I'm guessing by June, we should have that nailed. Um, we have some pieces of that already, like the threshold for deposit. But I want to have specifically, there's security stuff around this. This is why I'm just being careful. I think we could do this faster, but maybe be conservative and say June um, to where uh, the deposit side, we already nailed that. It's the credit card required on file before accepting a quote. There's security stuff around that because you're giving someone's customer information, uh, a payment information without process without uh doing business with them so there's a little bit of security stuff around that will the software integrate with gusto for payroll uh, it will not be a direct integration but in terms of zapier you could set this up and i would say that that would probably be through p2p app sooner than the software but again zapier is going to integrate with that so literally if you, you just go check out zapier z-a-p-i-e-r uh, and see all different uh um, softwares that it'll integrate with. And then what we'll just keep refining and making better and better is the zaps and the triggers for those to be able to integrate with. How does the AI measurement work, lawn treatment business, as well as mosquito flea and tick control? All right, so I'm not going to tell you how we're doing it. Uh, it's something that I feel like is going to be a little bit um, one of our unique differentiating factors. I'm not going to tell you that part. This is not available from the uh, from the get-go. So in February, this is not happening. This will probably be at least 12 months, probably more like 24 months before the AI measurement tool works. And it will absolutely do fantastic for things like Mosquito and to control. Um, there's so much data we can pull, um, but it's going to cost, I think I've said this publicly already, it's going to cost like 10 to $12 million for me to do this correctly. And so we really have to learn, oh, look, I'm launching Copilot to be able to afford some of these AI tools I know are going to cost me an arm and a leg. And one of them is the AI measurement tool so that you do not need to. Um, there is no measuring. The customer doesn't need to drag and drop. It's just all in the database. So um, this is going to take me a lot of money. So, all right, next caller is coming in from 706. It says Augusta, Georgia. Don't know if that's true. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me, brother. Absolutely. What's up? I guess uh, you kind of answer my question uh, i was going to kind of ask you some of the detail about the uh the way that you was going to source the uh the data for the uh the live pricing and uh i kind of developed a little something myself or whatever and kind of familiar with the technology and i was kind of curious if you was going to go and i don't know if you can answer this or not <clears throat> but essentially with the uh the lidar route kind of like the uh go eyelon or is it going to be more just Kind of like uh, uh, you know, like uh, Zillow API, like uh, Adam Data or something like that. Yeah. So all of those data. Is, or my, so go ahead. I'm just. I don't know if I'm at, stepping over the line by asking that question, okay. but essentially, I was just curious because your software is about to check all the boxes for what I was uh, personally trying to create for myself. And then the uh, the next thing I was going to ask about, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Zendesk how it has the uh, ability to basically change a lot of the, I don't know, uh, jobs and different things from the calendar view. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like far as workflow goes or whatever, like out of all the CRMs I've ever used, I think like the calendar view, being able to like change a, a job or something right there on the fly from mm -hmm. the calendar view. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like, like one of my biggest gripes is essentially with the workflow is that uh, you got to go back essentially like uh to the dispatch undispatch uh change this change that and then you know to make it a permanent update right so mm -hmm. like to minimize like that workflow process mm -hmm. if you could permanently change like uh, say for instance if you have something every two weeks like uh for a tuesday or something right mm -hmm. well instead of like maybe it rained that week right you need to move that tuesday to a wednesday well maybe you want to permanently move it to a wednesday so if i could update maybe from the calendar right there versus having to go back maybe do the job or something of that nature it greatly minimizes the uh the workflow having those features from the calendar view if that makes sense yeah no totally so um let me ask answer that question then i'll bounce back to the other one i'll go ahead and drop your call but i'll answer those in, in order so the so the second question about the calendar view um right now you can click on a job you can make edits right there in terms of doing it for the multi like for the entire like schedule, you would need to go to the client and open up the job specifically there and do it th that way. Um, again, these are the type of, of features that I understand would be helpful for, um, and everyone can make a use case for them, but I just don't think the differentiation is there and I'm trying to focus on other things. Those are things that we can pop out for relatively quickly though. And that's something that in like in 2024, I'll start addressing. 
Um, the 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 first part in terms of like how we're doing the AI measuring and stuff like that, we are not using the API. We are not using Zillow. We are not using lot measurements and lot square foot. They're inaccurate. It's also dumb for, for you to expect your customers to accurately or want to take their time and drop pins on their property. They're going to drop pins incorrectly. They're going to get an incorrect price. There's friction now that you've got to call them. It needs to be a seamless process. All right. It cannot guess. All right. There, there will have had to have been someone look at that property at some point and confirm that the data is correct. So um, we are not using lot square footage. It is not accurate enough. If you're in certain markets where they're just cookie cutter houses, it'll work just fine. But when you start going into properties, suburbs, et cetera, where you have an acre and 80% of it is pasture and only 20% of it is mobile lawn, you're going to have an incorrect price. Someone's going to be pretty unhappy when their price is five times what they would actually be charging them. And you're not going to get that job. And you're never going to know about it because they just leave the, they just leave the website. So um, it's not going to be an API. It's not going to be going in with Zillow. It's going to be something we would have to do custom. And it'll cost us a lot of money. And that's why I need to do Copilot to be able to afford it. How does the AI, oh, we already talked about that. Will Augusta franchises get a discount? Nope, they will not. The advantage of being in Augusta will be the fact that if we want something, we will build it. Um, and all the features that we are building will probably revolve around what's best for Augusta. The thing is, what's best for Augusta is usually best for the rest of the industry. Uh, being part of Augusta will be beneficial because you will know everything that's happening. And again, you're getting into the full integration of all different things that we do. And I, in my opinion, if you leave one thing out, it could fail. Right. So like if someone's like, oh, P4P doesn't work. It's like, well, yeah, did you implement profit sharing and open book management? Because if you didn't, it probably will fail. So you can't just take pieces and parts, in my opinion. That's what Augusta's advantage is. If people want to rent out pieces and parts, fantastic. I think it'll help their business. Do you have plans to add a function to allow for third party contracts or documents being stored in a client's file, such as DocuSign document? I don't know if Zapier is in with DocuSign. I don't know that. That would be my first you know, spot to think about. Um, we do have an area to store documents, pictures, PDFs, um, et cetera, where we're working on video compression later this year. Um, but in terms of third-party contracts, I don't think Zapier, I haven't checked Zapier, but we don't actually have like a DocuSign integration right now. We do not. Sometimes it does, oh, we will be working on signatures um, and not like the trashy ones I've seen in some CRMs that it's super bad on mobile. It's going to be super user-friendly. Um, and that is coming up probably f before fall. We'll have that done of, of 2023. Really good integration with signing with their finger or with their clicker. It's great. Sometimes it doesn't translate well, though, on certain sites. Dark mode for web browsers. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm currently working full time out on ships. I do have a field manager that does well keeping things on track. Should I go? Should I also go full time and be home 50% more or continue being gone half the year but pouring money into my business? I believe if I were full-time focused on sales and marketing, I would thrive and hit my $500,000 marker. What's your thoughts? It really comes down to what you're being, you're being paid now, right? Like if you're paying, getting paid $100,000 to be on a ship, um, you know, 20% margin business at $500,000, you're probably breaking even on what you're currently making. So if it's just a money thing, I'd be looking at what you're making now versus what you got to do in the business to replace that. If I was thinking about quality of life and what you want out of life, that's a whole different sub subject. Um, if you, what you want to do and, you know, are you sick and tired of being on ships or not? Yes. Job has the ability to require the current file before the estimate process is approved. It's all in the same process. Very cool. Dark mode. Let's go. <laughs> we, will it have tickets feature similar to service autopilot email integration? We've stuck with what was called to do's. That's what service autopilot used to be called. Um, they changed it to tickets and I don't like it. So uh, but email integration, uh, there's not an email integration like you're talking about where it integrates with the other thing, but it's, you don't need it. You don't need that integration that you have to pay extra for inside service. Mm -hmm. You do not need that if it's done correctly. Um, so one other thing, have you thought about, oh, by the way, um, if you really want that, you could do the email integration through Gmail or um, Microsoft Outlook through Zapier. So that is possible. One other thing, have you thought about adding phone call recording to client files? I'm not sure how this would work. On back end, just an idea. So this would be for your phone service. So like Ring Central or you know, host, you know, Grasshopper. They offer these call recording. We are not doing that because of security. There's a massive amount of issues with uh, recording phone calls. 
especially because we handle payment information and we store that on Stripe. So we aren't going to do that. Um, but you could you could get an integration with Ring Central, and we'll have that direct integration end of this year. And um, Zapier might have other options that you could use too. But uh, we aren't going to be recording phone calls. Hey, Mike, will the estimates make up selling easy? Will customers be able to add these additional upgrades or add on services by checking them on the estimate? Yes. So, for example, if someone asks for mowing, they'll be mowing, and then you could add on add on services, and it'd be separated. They could then check those and then check out, and it's very very cool. Add on services part is is awesome. The UI is beautiful. How does texting customers from inside Copilot work or look? I have so many messages in Gmail and my phone, and it's hard to keep track where I sent or received a certain place of info I need. Yeah, so I would just say instead of trying to explain it, uh, I just get the free version or sign up in, in February, take a look at it, see how it works. Um, I do think it's enterprise for texting with the um, one way or the two way. So um, you'll need to take a look at that. But uh, it'd be worth, even if even if, if if everyone's thinking about what I would recommend doing, I would probably spend the $250 and take it for a month, take it for a test drive with all the feature benefits and then see where it's at. And maybe at the end of this year, if you're like, ah, I need a couple things, I need job costing, I need some more in-depth automations, great. Wait till the end of the year, do one more month and see if it's ready for you, right? I'm not going to be pushing anyone to the software because like, I'm not trying to say that it's like so different right now. It's the fact that like you're getting on the train when we're coming out of the station and you know where we're going and I'm going to be really clear and honest about what's going on. And it's not going to take us four years to implement something very simple like a tipping feature. Will Copa have t- chemical tracking for lawn care companies? Yes, it does. It already has it from day one. There's some things inside of Real Green that I really like that we'll probably be implementing in 2024 for chemical tracking specifically. But it already does chemical tracking, like the uh, wind direction, all of that integrated. Um, there's some cool stuff we'll do with AI down the road in terms of suggestions around chemical tracking based on wind, et cetera. <clears throat> Will I be able to input current, current? Oh, we already talked about this. Um, it's only going to track from the time that you start inputting data yourself. Um, it will not go back in time. It's just because it just leads to too many errors, honestly. What is the biweekly webinar, Carl? What would be discussed? So it's going to be a biweekly webinar call with me, kind of like this, just for the users inside of the Facebook group. And it would be every two weeks on Saturdays and be open. I'm going to call it office hours. So it's basically, I call office hours. I'll hop in here for an hour. Um, ask any questions you want. Business, software, marketing, whatever you want. It'd be kind of like a mastermind. It'll be every two weeks. Right. So um, I, I just don't have time to do a lot of stuff one on one with people. I got a lot of people DMing me, et cetera. I know that some people will join Copilot just for the calls. And I think that's a good move um, if they want to do that. I need the money for Copilot to be able to develop the software and the features. I'm just being honest. We need the money. So it's a way for me to be able to reach a lot of people. And if they want to talk to me, I can't. Like, I don't answer my DMs very much now. I know it sounds stupid and arrogant, but like, I just don't have the time. I focus on Augusta a lot. Um, we do we do daily calls with them. Um, and so that's where my time is spent. But when it comes to like being able to reach me and being able to have questions with, directly with me, it's going to be through Copilot every two weeks on a Zoom call or on a Zoom, on a, a webinar like this. I do call in sometimes. I do questions like this about software, business, whatever it might be. It'd be called office hours. And that way, my opinion is if a lot of these CEOs did that, they'd have a whole different paradigm of what their software should look like because they'd actually get to know what their users need and what their pain points are. And they wouldn't be working on these dumb features that aren't moving the needle for their company, for the companies using them. All right. I, I really hope that like other leadership teams are like, oh, we should do the same thing. Like this makes a lot of sense. This is good for the industry. So like um, I think it'll keep me grounded, like what actually is needed by the users and uh, et cetera. Getting into Copilot now, will we be grandfathered in? when and if you raise the rates in the future. If we raise rates, it'll be across the board, um, down the road, and I'd be open and honest about what those are, what that money's going towards, and yeah. How long will companies have spend each day on Copilot for their business daily compared to other CRMs? Okay. How long will companies have spend each day on Copilot for their business daily compared to other CRM? I think you're talking about pricing. Just check out the pricing page. You can kind of do the math if you're trying to figure out how much it costs per day. Um, yeah. How will we be able? To, will we be able to make invoices and estimates from the mobile apps? Yes, you will be able to. It's a big thing actually that I want to make sure because in uh, other CRMs right now, the mobile apps, the designs and the layouts of the estimates are clunky and dumb uh, through the app, and so a lot of it has to be done through desktop. 
and I want it to be where the estimators out in the field, they do it on their phone and it looks really good. So that's a big reason why the price matrix, is I have not pushed it out prior to our launch in February and I need a little more time on it because it needs to look really good um, on the mobile. You sent me a funny super chat? Where? I got a super chat? I did see like a dollar ninety nine. Oh, can I get an ah uh, yeah ah uh, uh, yeah? I don't know what you're trying to get there. <laughs> I'm missing the joke. All right, I apologize. Okay, let's see here. Yardbook is annoying when I have to log in every time I open the page. It doesn't work on my Safari browser. Will Copa address these issues? I always see you in franchise in Valparaiso, Indiana. Valparaiso, Indiana. Let's go, Chad. So, um. In terms of, yeah, you will not need to log in every single time. It will work on Safari. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, some of these softwares are developed by com uh, people or companies that no longer support the, their software. Um, and I don't want to say too much. But some some softwares, the, the, the founders have moved on, their ad supported, and they're letting it sit there. And most of the time, it'll last five to six years before it's irrelevant. So these CRMs can sit there and make good money. Um but no features are added, no functionality is added, and it's not really going anywhere. So I can name names, but there's a few that have done that, and they came back. There's others that are currently doing that where the founders are no longer involved, and there's really no development whatsoever. It's just it's sitting there. It's on the books. They're making a little bit of uh, income passively. So it's not Copilot focused. That's good to know. What's that? Sorry, I do not know what you're focused on. So it's not. I don't. Sorry, I'm missing the context there. Audit trail and co call legs. Yes. Both of those are yes. Um, one thing that we are going to be developing is some automations around call logs, which I'm looking forward to, especially for large volume uh, call centers and companies that have lots of calls. Um, looking forward to that. Are there any forms to integrate to our websites for job requests? That will be coming in the summer uh, and towards the fall when we get the estimate request form inputs, uh, if not sooner. You could do Zapier to do it automatically right now, um, but actually full integration, uh, simple like out of the box will come later this summer. Yardbook does, does have an iOS app. It's in beta though, and you need to request access to Yard, Yardbook support. Mike, here's one of those stupid features you probably won't add, but I like. I think it would be valuable. We pay commission for our technicians to sign up new customers, sell additional services, et cetera. It would be cool if they could enter these requests from the app, select the type of service, and submit the estimate request. Estimate. Oh, then when the estimate is approved, they they are paid the corresponding commission based on the service that was sold. So obviously, we're not building this into the actual app. You could. I'm just trying to think how you could do this in automations. You could definitely do this through automations, um, because you could submit a ticket, a form that could then trigger adding. This would honestly be a P for P thing, in my mind. Um, but we don't have this now. We don't have this now. But I like the idea. It's cool. On the app, is there going to be a beta or version one? Yardbook Android app is still an alpha, and I hate it. There's not going to be a beta. When we roll out the app, it's going to be fully functional. If there's a bug or two, I will make sure we jump on that ASAP in February before everyone's inside the software. When using Copa, like you guys got to realize, if something's not working, I don't sleep until it's fixed. If it's going to keep you from operating. And like when Augusta hit, and stuff hits the fan, I don't sleep until it's fixed because I can't sleep until it's fixed. So, um, yeah, like I'm not going to let it sit there and ruin people's businesses. And I have had that happen to me inside CRMs where for days and weeks we have to deal with issues and do workarounds and garbage and that's not happening. And I will be open and transparent because we will make mistakes. There will be bugs. There will be mistakes. We will we will mess up. All right. Um Absolutely, especially when we roll out new features at the clip that we, we're, we're planning to do. Like, we're going to drop the ball. I will be as honest and transparent about what's happening, where we're at in the process, and what I'm doing to fix it. I can guarantee you that. I can't guarantee you it's going to be smooth sailing, everything perfect, because whenever you're adding new features to software, it'll break something else. When you add something new, it breaks four other spots. you got to test as much as possible. You usually have, we create algorithms to do, to do automatic testing before we roll things up, but then somehow users are smarter than computers, and they figure out ways to break it. That will happen. Guaranteed. Don't think this is going to be like some smooth sailing ship. We're going to be fixing and we're building this airplane as we're flying it. There'll be a lot more features implemented in our software compared to any other software in this space. That will create problems. That will create bugs. That will create glitches. But I will be as open and transparent as possible on the Facebook group about what's going on, 
what we're doing to fix it. And we'll have solutions to the problem of like, here's what you got to do for now. We're working on this. We'll get this out as soon as possible. I'll keep you updated. Like that's what I feel is missing from so many of these CRMs. Every CRM, every software is going to have problems, glitches, bugs, especially if they're innovating quickly. They will 100%. But the, the level of communication with the community is the part that's so important. And uh, that's the only thing I can promise for now. When using Copilot, does it go with QuickBooks or will it be the own system? When when using Qu Copilot, does it go with QuickBooks or will it be the own system? Um, I'm assuming you're asking, like, do we connect currently with bank accounts and things like that inside of Copilot? We do not. Yeah, I, I would recommend a connection with Copilot. Um, it is a lot of security stuff for us to start connecting bank accounts and credit cards to our CRM. That's why most people just integrate with something like CR, uh, with uh, QuickBooks or Wave or other you know, uh, type of a uh, fresh books, thing like that, because they've already figured out they're compliant. Um, and there's just less risk, um, from a security standpoint. Um, but we are not planning in the near future to do this. If we create a bank that would change. Um, but that's all down the road regarding spraying. Will it show daily square footage? Will it show daily square footage and revenue goal per route for the route text? Yeah. From the dispatch board, you'll be able to have, uh, which uh, columns you want to show. And if your custom field is square footage, for example, you'd be able to then just show your, uh, that column specifically in the dispatch board. Would, oh, it was already the same one. I know you were talking about it. Okay. Parker's. Good day, Mike Andes. Great to meet you, mate. Okay, this is definitely someone from Australia. I have a question regarding franchising. I've been in business for one year now. My goal is to franchise my business nationally throughout Australia. However, I don't want to rush the process and very much want to get the timing right. I want to make sure, sure our business model is perfect before we copy and paste it. What would you recommend in order before opening our first franchise location? I'm just going to be honest. I get this question asked all the time. I have yet to see one exe anyone execute on it. It's extremely difficult. And everyone says th thinks I say that because I did it. And like we, we, we got through a lot of the hard part of like the first hundred locations. It is so extremely painful to franchise. Like it is not the, it's not the way to make the most money. It's, it's extremely expensive legal tape all around it. You are asking for every problem to become your own. I would not recommend it for people. I really wouldn't. I, I just wouldn't like it, I would make way more money. And done it with, with, with way less headache. Like the past three years is like horrible. Um, and we're gotten to the place now where we're profitable and we're going to be okay. But that first hundred locations is financial nightmares. It is legal nightmares. It's extremely hard to convince a hundred people to become franchisees and provide enough value to where they want to. Um, it's extremely, extremely difficult. Like I just can't overemphasize that. And I, I would just... If you don't have a very clear path of how and why you are going to do 100 plus locations, you probably shouldn't do it because it usually ends really poorly. Um, yeah, there's some really good books that talk about this, but like the vast majority of, of franchises do not work out. They're, they have a lower success rate than a regular business because it's just brutal. And I don't talk about it a lot because like it makes me sound like I'm like, oh, look at what I did. Like, it's extremely hard. The webinar office hours is not copilot. Okay, yeah. So it'll be it'll definitely be revolving around copilot because I'll be able to I'll be in the software showing data and how that integrates with your business and stuff. But it will not be just about uh, copilot. It'll be like, kind of like a mastermind of sorts. But just just twice a, twice a month basically. Copilot CRM. Thanks, Kevin. Congratulations, Kevin, on winning franchisee of the year, Augusta Nation. Let's go. Broke your trophy on the way home, but glad we got to replace it. <laughs> I'm talking about the time you would spend each day on Copa in order to take care of the business compared to the time you have to spend sitting at a computer on our, on other CRMs. I'm talking about, okay, so let me go to your other question because I didn't understand it previously. Got it. Let me go back. Bradley, Bradley, Bradley. Here we go. How long will companies have, have spent each day on Copa for their business daily? Compared? Okay. How long? <coughs> okay. I got where you're going now. How long we have to spend time on it? Okay. I'm talking about the time you would spend each day on Copilot in order to take care of the business compared to the time you have spent sitting on a computer. Got it. Okay. So this is a number that I think can be brought down with AI. That is the premise of Copilot is to bring this number down. Um, how you bring this number down is simple UI, a software that understands what you need, 
and then gives you the data that you need in a, in a way that is simple to understand and tells you what to do based upon the data. It synthesizes it for you because AI is a lot better at synthesizing data than any of us because we all have emotion. We have which employees we like, which employees we don't like. We have good days. We have bad days. We have customers that we like because they've been with us for 10 years. We have customers we don't like because they're, the slope of their hill is a little off. AI doesn't know all those emotions. It only knows data. It will tell you the best way to run and operate a business, 100%. I would absolutely rather AI run a business than me because I am emotional. Data is not. And so um, the goal of AI should be to reduce the amount of time that you have to spend on a software system. So that's why I get very confused and very alerted, uh, worried by the fact that some of these CRMs take so much time to set up, so much time to set up automations, and people spend hours and hours going down rabbit trails of setting price matrices and packages and master routes and all this garbage that does not move their business forward. Um, and so my goal is to reduce this amount because the time that you spend on the software is should be time spent with your team, training, spent on marketing, spent on branding, spent on selling more to your customers, not on figuring out these intricate little things of running reports and then synthesizing that data through Excel and then extrapolating the data of what customers you should raise prices on. That's a waste of time. So AI will fix that and hopefully make you spend less time doing the menial work of running reports and which customers you should raise prices on and which ones are the furthest away from your center point inside your location and how what your attrition rate is that my franchises are currently doing manually inside of Excel, which is great. I'm glad they're doing it. Why is attrition not something that is like on the front page of every single software system that has recurring revenue? You have recurring revenue. The only thing that matters is input and attrition. That's it. And yet we, it's like, it literally takes 10, 15 minutes to figure out your attrition for the month. Or you have to manually do it in Excel and then run the math. Like, yeah. I use crew control now for scheduling and to manage crew. Just wanted to know, will Coba have some of the managed crew so the manage crew members and crews. Yes, it will. Um, just keep in mind that a software like that one is specifically made just for scheduling and for for routing. It's probably gonna have better features than the the all CRMs combined because that's all they're focusing on. Um, what it's not gonna do though is also have estimating, uh, automations, marketing, all these other things, right? So um, this is why there's always a feature battle. This is why I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get bombarded with people asking for features is because all these different softwares that do niches and pieces and parts of, of, of a CRM, they can get really good at it. My goal is to cherry pick over the next 12 to 24 months those best ones and create a package that I feel is then the best and then we'll start to innovate more on AI. What do you mean? Time tracking pro version, add optional items to estimate. What do these mean? Time tracking pro. Oh, so the time tracking is just a different level. So time tracking inside of, I see what you're saying now. You're talking about features inside Copilot. Got it. Time tracking pro is going to do a much better job of synthesizing between which customers you should rate prices on, budgeted hours versus actual hours, et cetera. Add optional items to estimates is what we talked about previously where you would do an estimate. Then you could tack on additional items that they would be upsold into. So they accept the estimate like, hey, by the way, would you like to add this to your quote? Here's some options for like leaf cleanup and bush trimming. And they could tap on those as well. I'm very excited to start with this. Hopefully I signed up early enough to be one of the first. Will chemical spraying include weather info automatically? Um, we are working on improving this. It's not going to be from day one, but this is something that we think is really cool inside of like companies like real green software and some other softwares that do this really, really well. It's like just, they do spraying. Um, it'll be 2024 before we match some of those, but it does do chemical spraying in, and we do have that, you know, a chemical tracking and all that, but it's not as automatic as I'd like it to be because AI can absolutely pull that data, pull it, give the card, submit it already. But for now it's not going to be as automatic as I'd like it to be. It's getting close. We're, we're, this is, yeah, we're using a couple of different integrations with APIs, the weather. Will there be a tipping feature the customer can get after you charge them and they receive their invoice? Yes. Oh, I see what you're saying. After they charge and they receive their invoice. Okay, got it. This is a different question. So yes, there's a tipping feature when they're, they're checking out. This is something we are working on. And that is a tipping feature when even though their card has been um, charged and it'll be on the receipt that they get or the paid invoice that they get back to them. Um, so that they can still leave a tip during that time. Why did you do if it is not rewarding? 
it is rewarding because the goal is to change the level of professional in the landscape industry. And in order to do that, in my opinion, people don't listen until we start competing with them. And in order to get them to switch to P for P, in order to open up their books, in order to do profit sharing, they won't listen until we're competing with them. And I tried this for years, just doing content and it didn't work. Now, all of a sudden, people are listening because we're competing. And so my goal is like, hey, we are not trying to compete. We're trying to raise the level of professional in the landscape industry. Just keep doing what we're doing, and it'll help you in your business. It'll help your employees. It'll make you more profitable, whether it be using Copilot, whether it be using Home Service CPA, all these things that we're doing, it'll at least help you, even if you're not part of Augusta. However, by having a 1,000 locations in the United States, people will know who we are, and they'll start to listen to what I say. And it's not a matter of like, it's not, as it came across really arrogant. I don't mean it like that. I mean it like, I just want people to do what's right for their business, right for their employees, and it's going to make them successful. And the best way to do that is for them to see that I grow a massive company that's successful and all of our franchises are successful using these systems. And ideally, they join because they see the value and the amount of savings and the infrastructure that we built all being fully integrated with command center, et cetera. They see the value. If they don't, they have to adapt what we're doing because they can't compete with us. Because they, they, when, when we have a thousand locations in every single market, we have an Augusta Long Care that's doing P4P, guess what everyone else is going to have to do? They're going to have to switch to p for p they're going to have to do these things. When when all our webs when all our locations and our websites are all ranking, outranking, and there's two or three Augusta Lawn Care locations in every market at the very top of the web pages, they will have to compete with us. And they'll have to improve their game. It's better for the customer and it's going to be better for the industry. And that's how we raise the level of professionals in the industry. And I don't think I can do that without a thousand plus locations. Looking forward to join. I'm currently using two different software companies because landscaping and lawn spraying softwares are not functional in one package. Thank you for your work and time. Yeah, I would say if you're using a lawn spraying software specifically, we will not be at you at that level until 2024, uh, even late 2024, um, because they do have some very specialized things and we are not going to be able to tackle that in 2023, just to be perfectly honest. However, I would take a look at it, see if it would make do um, so that you can keep it in one because there's a lot of inefficiencies in having two softwares like that. If you want to go pilot, hit the like button. <laughs> Destroy it. Do you see Copilot bringing down the amount spent? Dude, it's been two hours. Are you kidding me? Merciful heaven. It's been two hours. Let's go. Do you see Copilot bringing down the amount spent by franchisees on Command Center? 100%. That's the goal. I, I hate the fact that we spend so much at Command Center. Uh, my, my dream is that we spend less at Command Center. Like, like we got to remember, I have eight locations now. If I can save 10% of my bill at command center, let's go, right? AI is going to, it should eliminate a lot of it. Um, there's multiple touches and estimates that should not be there um, because mobile mobile estimating for most of these softwares is trash. Um, so these are things like I want to figure out. I, I know if I just do several things for command center, yeah, we'll reduce revenue. I don't care. It's like our lowest margin. It's the hardest thing to do. It's extremely painful to build. It's extremely low margin. We've lost tons of money on it just trying to figure out to get it to do being profitable. Um, I'm thrilled out of my mind because the hardest way, hardest thing about growing Augusta Lawn Care is scaling up Command Center. It is the hardest thing. Hardest thing, 100%. Um, but it's also the thing that helps our franchisee the most is like the setup process, having the support, having someone answer the phone. It has to be there. However, the same way that I look at you as an operator in your business, taking things off your plate. I want command center to not have to be dealing with minutia they don't need to be dealing with either. I want them to be focused on like doing Zoom calls with our, like I now in the same room as some of them and like listening to them do onboarding calls into the software and in the QuickBooks and explaining how debt works and how to do their balance sheet is like, it's incredible. It is awesome. That's what they should be doing. Not copying and pasting things in estimates and attaching things manually. That can all be taken off their plate and that's why I need to control the software because now when we have a, let's just call it three or 400 locations in the next couple of years. When that happens, if I'm able to save a couple pennies on every transaction by command center saving money, that saves my franchisees tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars every single day, month, year. And that's the goal. Hey, Ryan. Thanks for answering my question, Mike. I don't mind. I don't mind nightmares however and the plan with franchising isn't to make the money with money is establish my brand and name throughout the country and part of a much bigger plan i'd like to know what you have in place in your business before deciding to franchise thanks mate you'll never feel like you're ready for franchising you'll never feel like the system's perfect um it'll come down to whether or not it is worth the franchise fees for a new operator will i be able to track inactive leads to figure out cost per lead 
I was able to calculate customer acquisition cost in yard book, but not cost per lead. Is this an important number? It's tough to do this because this is a manual process still of what input of that lead is coming from. So you still have to manually ask, hey, did this come from Facebook? Did this come from, from Google, et cetera? And a lot of times customers just do not know this answer. Or it's inaccurate. And so the best way to calculate this is the lead coming to your website. And so um, we will be working on this a lot, but we ultimately have to really focus on getting the traffic to people's websites so that when the lead comes in from their website, then we can do a really good job of tracking this number. Unfortunately, also, we can't control, this is another input that we can't control, and that is how much are you spending on marketing? We would rely on that number being inputted to us until, until one day we have a bank. Because then I can get that number from, from your um from your bank statement. I can say, okay, these are all marketing expenses. Then I can synthesize the numbers in terms of customer acquisition costs because I do not trust inputs, manual inputs. Do not trust it. That's why I don't believe in budgeting. For the vast majority of people, the only reason I like budgeting is because it's a it's a uh, framework by which people spend less money and they don't spend money on stupid things. Budgeting good for them, all right? Budgeting is reliant on you inputting data to export and get synthesized information. The same thing is true for customer acquisition costs. It depends on you having solid data of where those leads are coming from, what you're spending on those leads, what your, how much you're spending, your marketing spend is on each of those platforms, tracking that data correctly. I can't do that until I know exactly what you're spending on what platforms that will come down the road. I'm shooting, I'm hoping and praying I'm going to bank by 2025. That is my hope and prayer. If I can do that, we control the entire transaction and there are some things that we could do that would blow people away. And no one like Stripe will do it because it's too small potatoes for them. They don't, they don't really care about you know, the level of transaction that we're focused on. It will be so awesome. But it's probably 2025 before I you know, do that. Yeah, so jobber has jobber payments. These are not actual banks, folks. These are them integrating with another processor and adding a little fee on top. All right. So we no Cobalt is not going to have that. We will have Stripe until I can demolish features of what Stripe can do because we can go more specialized in terms of what business owners need and not doing Stripe, which they just could care less. Like we will never even get like a a, a point of what they do uh, in terms of transaction volume. So they don't they don't create features for us as business owners in the small small business and small uh, service based businesses. But yeah, no, jobber payments, LMN payments, all these. They're taking a processor, they're popping their name on it, and they're taking a percentage, usually a quarter point off the top. Let's just all be honest, okay? This will be actually one thing I really look forward to is exposing these things as I go through this process. Because like, as I've gone through it, like meeting more of the tech side, meeting more of these other developers and the co-founders and things like that, it's like you get it like, ah, oh, that's why they do that. Oh, that's why that's happening. It's very, very interesting. Got to head out now. Thanks for the live session. Brandon, are you a, are you basing the AI backend off the crew you currently have working in Augusta Nation or are you manually inputting this information based on what you would like to see in an ideal employee? Um, so the AI is basically trying to get my brain on the, on the, on the software. Like, like, there, is, there is currently nothing in AI that's going to tell you what a good attrition rate is versus a bad attrition rate. That doesn't happen. So I have to be the input. And that's the time-consuming part for me right now is like, where are all the data points have to be in order for this notification, 3D notification to go through? Um, and so it's not really based on anything besides just my experience and what I've seen in businesses. And then I'll tweak it as time goes on uh, based upon people breaking it, right? So like, hey, that notification should not have popped up there. We need to add another data point to make sure that qualifies it before it sends out. Do you, do you see the market ever getting so set contrary with lawn care and landscape companies that no one will be able to stay in business? No, I do not see that at all. I do think there will be a uh, consolidation of this industry, 100%. Mike, what do you recommend for a lawn landscape design app software, something easy to use for a newbie? I don't really have a, a, a recommendation, to be perfectly honest, um, because I just have stayed at it for the past six months. I've been 100% in CRM world. Um this is something that's probably in 2024 we'd try to integrate with in terms of when we start focusing more on project design stuff um, to be able to integrate with one of them so that your designs come across seamlessly, but we're a ways off in that. Thanks, brother. Would you ever add a feature to the app where the job notes pop up automatically when they open the job and the crew has to confirm they read them uh, before being able to clock in? I think we already have this. I'm not going to confirm that 100%, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, similar to what Service Autopilot already has. 
Um, based on my, my experience, uh, this feature is great for us in our brain. And if you have it, your employees just get used to checking it off automatically. Uh, if they're not going to read the notes, they're not going to read it if it pops up with the notes. It just It's just another thing that they got to click on. To be perfectly honest, I have not seen it move the needle. Um, unless it's different than job notes and it's custom and it's unique on every property. But if it's the same thing every time, they, it's white space. Would you recommend your software for a 1 million revenue company or am I better with someone else for now? Also, how far out are you booking one-on-one? -on -one? I have a startup that will produce seven figures the first year. I think you'd love to hear about it. I really use your knowledge. Yeah, there's in the YouTube, there's, I think it's mycannies.com slash coach. I don't recommend using it. It's too expensive. It's literally $1,000 an hour, but I have to do that because I don't have enough time. Okay, so don't use it unless it's very, very specific. Like if you want to talk about a company, okay, it's fine. Um, in terms of 1 million plus, I think if you are uh, 1 million plus and you want to grow with Copilot and you don't want the pain of switching over in 12 months, I'd just do it now. I genuinely believe 95% of the features that you'd use in any other software we're going to have from day one at a $1 million. If you're at $5 million, you probably want to stay for another year with someone else because there's probably, we only probably cover 90% of the features that you'll need. And the extra 10% is actually going to move the needle for you. For the vast majority of people, in my opinion, very, very biased opinion, um, they would be better off leaving the one or two pet features in another software to switch to Copilot now. I would believe that. I actually think that's true. Um, because one or two features is not going to make or break your business. Everyone thinks it does, but it's not. It is not. It's not what moves the needle for your business. One or two features is not going to make or break you. Um, I believe that you need to get on a CRM based upon where you believe that CRM is going. I truly, that's why, that's why I'm doing Copilot. Because I, I, there's no one I'm like, ah, leadership is great. Their technology is great. They're pushing the right features through. They have great community. They're listening to their users. I have direct access to the CEO. Like there's, there's no one like that. I need this. I'm a CM, <laughs> CRM nerd. What a waste of, what a waste of time. It's funny. Will your CRM allow crew members to make notes about the service perform? Yes. Will crew members make a decision to fertilize? Will crew members make a decision to fertilize or do an irrigation repair while on a scheduled job and add it to the bill? It based on your, uh, the user permissions that you allow for their app, but the, the functionality is there. The mobile app is completely functional in terms of creating estimates, invoices, running automations. Everything can be done through the app, 100% of it. It's up to you to determine which users are allowed to use certain features and parts of the app. Does SRI really work? I struggle with believing it. I don't know what that is, sorry. Oh, SEO. Does SEO really work? It is the, it. yeah, it 100% works. Well, yeah, like, my goodness. If it doesn't work, I've been wasting a lot of money. <laughs> SEO is extremely important. Um, SEO has changed from being about keywords and, and, and site links, though, to being more based upon speed of load time and what kind of pop-ups and, and how fast your site is loading on mobile. These are the things that are much more important now when it comes to SEO. I thought I was the only one that eats and sleeps my business, but I believe I have met one that studies a lot more. Will the software have pre-made documents and files, or will everything need to be written and built? There will be pre-built stuff that I think is pretty good. Um, that will be improved as we go into summer because this is something I have not spent a lot of time on um, in terms of making these better. But they're already there. They would be, You could use the software from day one in terms of estimates, invoicing, et cetera. It's very, very well put together. Um, but yeah, you could absolutely make your own as well. What kind of car do you drive? I drive a Honda Civic. Thanks again for all the information you give us. I've learned so much about the business process watching you for probably over two years now. I think you had way less than 10K subscribers when I started. Cool, thank you. Speaking of credit card processors, it would be great to have one that made profit first automated and allowed you to automatically deposit revenue by percentage to various accounts. Yes, I do know that. That would be something in the bank that we could figure out. Um, but uh, it's not going to be inside of the CRM. It's just such a niche feature. Like literally 1% of the users would be using profit first. So I can't currently deploy um, resources towards that. Would I be able to import my current... CRM Yardbook in CSV format. Yes, 100%. Mike, I have a seven-figure year ahead of me in the as the first year. Yes, $1,000 an hour is so worth it. Okay. Yeah, if your first year is seven figures, go for it. Let's go. Is Augusta Nation using Copilot? Nope. We need to create um, features that I believe we all need, especially at Command Center, honestly, uh, for this year, and then we'll all switch over at the end of this year. But we will support service autopilot if franchisees 
are wanting to use that and other softwares that we are already using at Command Center. But the main thing is we got to get this Ring Central thing nailed. We got to get a special software that we create for Command Center. We need to get that integrated. Um, that's the only thing that's holding us back. Is your car yellow? No, it used to be. I sold it. Guy said Honda Civic that's red. Will this be able to make tracking people be easier for projects with multiple crew members where each will contribute different hours towards a project? We have to manually calculate this now. Um, once we integrate with P4P software, because P4P software already does this, as long as the guys are clocking into the app, it will do it for you. Um, but when it integrates with Copilot, when, when Copilot integrates with P4P, um, this will be even more seamless. But uh, right now, this is possible inside of P4P software.com. Will Copilot be aware of your budget available to invest in your Will Copilot be aware of your budget available to invest in your business? Will Copilot be aware of your budget available to invest in your business? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, no, budgeting is not something we're going to build in uh, right now uh, in terms of figuring out what you should invest in your business, et cetera. Uh, I think the inputs, though, uh, and the KPI cockpit will be a very clear indication of where you should be investing in the business in terms of efficiency, in terms of marketing, et cetera. But it's not going to tell you what to spend. I need input from the bank. So again, down the road, when I have bank information, this, this is going to be pretty cool. What about security? It's my info. Is my info secure? Yeah, it's very, very secure. All the, the payment side is inside of Stripe. Um, if you do not trust me to not sell your data, then probably shouldn't you know, use Copilot. Um, every software that you have stores your data 110%. If they don't, you should be worried. Um, it goes on a cloud server, but anyone can access that that is inside the company, 100%. If you don't trust me, you think I'm going to use that against you, don't use Copilot. Um, I would hope that my track record says otherwise. I will use that information to simply educate other users of Copilot to know exactly what they should be doing in their business based upon trends that I can then extrapolate from real data, not surveys, but actually knowing what's going on. That's what office hours will be about. Okay. Um, we see across the board this working well. This is not working well. This KPI is lower than usual compared year over year. Like that's what I will use that information for. I will not use it against you. And if I did, I would it would take me it take one person inside Copilot to tell everyone else, and you would sink the business. It'd be stupid for me to do it. And there's there's just no reason for me to do it. So I need I need Copilot to be able to fund the stuff I want to build. I don't know how 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 I can make this clear. There's stuff I want to build. It costs millions of dollars worth of development. There's no way I'll be able to afford it if I just keep doing my own businesses or even inside of Augusta Nation. And this is why Augusta Nation, I've explained this to them. We can do this internally and it'd be small, but we would not have the power and the resources to build what we I know can be built with technology um, without going doing this where we share this with the public. That's why I'm doing this. There's stuff I need to build to make commands are extremely efficient. Augusta Nation, extremely efficient. And it's going to help other business owners be extremely efficient. And I can't build those things without millions and millions and millions of dollars for development. All right. I could be like, oh, we're going to do it with like one or two people. I'm going to make it super lean. I'm sorry. It's not going to work. There's a lot of work that needs to be done here. And the features that I think I know we can build with technology and will solve a lot of problems for small business owners can only be built with a lot of money. And that's why I'm selling it. And that's why I ask people to buy the software because I need the money. I'm being very open on I need the money for development. All right. Do you talk to anyone you went to high school with? Eh, not really. A frustration I had with many CRMs is that they try to be all things, all aspects of the green industry. We've adopted a simple services model. Will Copilot remain focused on simple services or try to accommodate all aspects of the industry? Great question. Love this question. This comes down to the feature battle of adding a whole bunch of features. Oh, add this and this and this. And it's too confusing, too overwhelming. This can be solved. This is 100% solvable with organization of how people get into the software. For example, different industries should have different layouts of their CRM. Different industries should not have certain features being shown. It should be able to where you unlock certain features based upon whether or not you want them, not whether they're there sitting there for 1% of the users to operate out of. So um, over the next 12 to 24 months, we have to build infrastructure for the masses. Okay, The features that I feel is going to be the best thing for the broad base of users and have the biggest impact. Beyond that, that is when you start making features that can get unlocked or that you, in the settings, disable or enable. All right, this is, keeps it from being trying to be everything to everyone to where you're like 
why is this button here? I know it's used for something, but I don't, it's like some other industry. Like that's what gets confusing inside these softwares. What type of information for my current CR, CRM service output will be difficult to upload in a, in a copilot. Your payment process, your payment information will not come across. Um, some of your job history does, depending on how you have it set up. Your custom fields will. Um, a lot of stuff will come, honestly, um, come across. And our goal is to specifically have service output first be the one that allows for implementation across the board. Simple growth is on board to help with this process too. They're probably actually going to be better at us, better at it than Better at it than us at the beginning. I probably messed it up, but whatever. So um, because they just know service all pot so well and, and the import export process. But later this year, we will have one internally for people to use uh, specifically. Like here's how you get out of service all pot. Here's how you input it. In, and it's very specialized for each software. Excited for Copilot. Can't wait to be fully functional and to move away from SA to Copilot. Got to go from autopilot to Copilot. Example notes, past history, and stuff like that. Yes, this will, this will mostly come across depending on where you put the notes. Like if, if you're putting them office notes versus job notes, things like that. Um, you'd be surprised at how much information you can get out of them. It just needs to be correctly categorized. So um, again, we will have specialized onboarding processes for each CRM competing, uh, hopefully by the end of this year. Uh, SA will probably be the first one though. Because who wouldn't want to switch from autopilot to copilot? With Copilot, will it have a clock in and clock out option so we can focus on one software instead of three softwares? Yes, you have a clock in and clock out and down the road that will integrate with P4P so that you don't have to do both apps. Hit the like button. Tar Heel Ariel says, hit the like button. You know what you could actually do for me? There's 92 people still on this after two and a half hours. If you're listening to this, do me a massive favor, okay? You can't buy the software now, but what you can do is you can share this video or... You could share copilotcrm.com on like a Facebook group, a WhatsApp group, um, anywhere. Like I'd really appreciate it. The more money I can make off this, the better this software will be. I can guarantee it. So please share the message. Not beyond a like. Like like is good. That's like starter package, okay? But if you want to go like to the next level, if you want to go flying with the copilot, please share the link. Copilotcrm.com. I'd really appreciate it. Just get the message out and um, hopefully help more people. I recently had a website designed for my business and would like to switch over to long-term web design. Can my current website be brought over and managed or will I have to have a new one designed? I would, honestly, I have yet to see one that we see and like, oh, we can build on top of that and it's going to be good for you. We almost always scratch sites. I don't think we've ever said that site we can't beat and outperform. So if we, you could definitely hit up with the team, hit Tori and the team and potentially they're like, hey, if you really want that, we can build on top of it. But I just have yet to see any site where we're like, that's better than what we can build and we should use that instead. Um, I just have yet to see that. So you're for perfectly honest. I will be switching from Yardbook to Copilot, by the way. Thanks, brother. After six months, do away with free version. Make it $25 a month. We'll see. Um, I understand from a business standpoint, that makes more sense. But you have to remember, as much as I need the money, I also am trying to help people in this industry get started. And... Um, for some people, the free version of Yardbook is the reason they start with Yardbook and it limits their growth down the road. And my goal is to get them off of Yardbook onto Copilot. And if I can get them up to 50 users inside Copilot, they'll be much better set up to get to 500,000 in revenue staying inside of our software versus trying to stay in Yardbook. That's just my perfect, honest opinion. All right. Um, I know that if I would have started back when I did and I didn't have any money and I would have gone with Yardbook and I'd be stuck in it. And I would have grown to like 150, 200,000. And I would have been like, man, like I, I, I wouldn't have not have known what I was missing out on. And um, I would prefer to be able to have people start off with very little and prove the value of the software, prove the value of just being in the Facebook group with the office hours. Like just that alone, in my opinion, like people offer me crazy amounts of money sometimes for calls and for Q&A and stuff like that. Just being on those twice a month is in my opinion worth a hundred bucks. Like there are people selling like masterminds for thousands of dollars. Let's just call it a hundred bucks. Like the goat gang thing, a hundred dollars, they get a Facebook group and they get a coaching or a, uh, uh, they get on a live call once a week. Okay. I'm doing it every two weeks. Okay, great. The entry level package of Copilot, if someone just wanted it for the office hours, I think is worth it to be a part of that group and part of that mastermind of people that are paying and that are um, involved and communicating with the community. I just believe that. Um, but I will do want to make a free version so that people don't go to Yardbook. I'm just, I know I'm now, now I'm saying better saying not good. 
this other company that has a free version. I don't want them to go there because I think it's going to limit their growth and it's going to limit the, what their business can become. We'll be, man, it's been two and a half hours. I'm getting hungry. I haven't ate all day long. This is crazy. All right. This is probably my longest live stream ever, two and a half hours. Will it be possible eventually to eliminate the need for crews to clock in and out of jobs since the crew location is tracked anyways through the CRM? Could this track just the time of the job had stopped each job and pull that data automatically? In theory, yes. However, someone could go to the job and then leave. Even if they like, they could go to the job, eat their sandwich, and then leave. And then it, it would think that the job was done. Down the road, when you start tracking um, data in terms of like steps and things like an activity, you could actually track this. But the technology for that in terms of being commercially viable for us to integrate into is probably three to five years away. For now though, um, you would still need a mark complete. Even like Amazon, when they deliver a package, they still require a complete at the end of the, uh, like, like we are finished. We like, This was delivered. There needs to be a, 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 a stop point for whatever that code is running. Okay. ACH, any ACH connectivity with customers stored info? Yep, we do ACH. It stores the customer's info. It's great. Do you have anything to do with SA updating their estimates? No comment. Let's go. When should I start marketing before or after I get my LLC? Um, if you're just getting started and you're really, really small, go get customers. Then get your LLC because... It's harder to get customers than it is making an LLC. Everyone in the world can set up an LLC. Not many people can get customers and make them profitable. Is there a feature to track total time on clock for the day, an individual clock in and out of jobs? Yes, it's already in there. Okay, please share the link with everyone you know. Share, please. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, please upload this video as a video. Please upload this live as a video, Mike. It will be great to reference. Yes, this video will be on Facebook and YouTube for everyone to be able to see it. It'll be recorded. Can jobs be made into groupings that can be assigned as a unit? Yes. For example, one area of town is labeled as Thursday A. Then when a new client in that area is added to, you put them in the Thursday A group. Yes. And down the road, AI will do this for you. There is no reason for this to be a manual process. All right. So down the road for recurring jobs, you have to do this very specifically for different types of jobs. Recurring jobs, estimates, and projects have to be done differently when it comes to automated scheduling. Automated scheduling is something we're tackling in 2024. It's going to be awesome. For example, with recurring jobs, you have a map, you have to delineate exactly what areas based on GPS coordinates, what areas of the map you serve on certain days. That way, when the customer goes to, your, goes to your website, ideally, they're getting information from AI that they are able to then see their pricing, accept it, put their car on file, and then immediately get the day at which they're going to be serviced. That is then put into the CRM, scheduled. There is no input from a human whatsoever. That's possible. I believe we can get there within 24 months. Um because the, the part that I'm missing right now is the AI for the pricing part. Um, but the other parts, not super hard. You could do that in 12 months. 24 months, though, before the pricing and that whole process there is streamlined. That is the goal. I need a lot of money to make it happen. So please join copilotcrm.com. It'll be great. I really appreciate all of your support. Being here for over two and a half hours. Hopefully I answered some of your questions. I'm really looking forward to the February launch. A lot of work that we're going through. Um, again, let me reiterate this in case anyone missed this. We will have problems. We'll make mistakes. I will personally make mistakes. I will rule out things too quickly. I will th rule out things too slow. There'll be features you do not like. There'll be features that you do like. I promise you one thing. I will communicate to my best, the very best I possibly can of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and what struggles we're facing and where we're at in that process. Um, I truly believe the best decision for any business owner doing under $2 million in revenue is to join Copilot in February. That is my true and honest opinion. If you're doing over that, please wait 12 months or check at least the free features to see if it's something that you uh, can operate inside of. And keep in mind that 98% of the features will probably be in there for you, but there might be a couple ones missing. Um, I appreciate all of your support. I really, really do. I look forward to what copilotcrm.com is going to become. I'm looking forward to all of you meeting uh, Patrick at Landscape Summit 2023 next to Equip Expo. He's going to be coming. He's the CTO, Chief Technical Officer, runs the technical side of the operations. We work very well together. I'm really looking forward to it. And I just want to say thank you all of uh, all of you guys for supporting what we're trying to do. It's the first step of something really cool. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, guys. Take care.